She's the midnight mistress of fairies and dark mischief. He's the paranormal beacon of mystic fairs and government leaking. If the dark side had a prom, they would be the king and queen. They live the metaphysical and make a wicked awesome team. From every single culture in every corner of the globe, they creep the lore and legends just to keep you in the know. For some it's hyperbole, fantastical and myth. For them it's all too real and your paradigm will shift. It's forever Halloween with all treats and no tricks. He's got a thing for witches and she's all Stevie Nicks. So welcome to our carnival of the weird and the bizarre, where UFOs and curses take shape beneath the stars. Sit back, relax, open your mind, and stay a few. It's time for John and Stacy, and do we have something for you? Welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow with your host, John and Stacy Edwards of ParanormalSideshow.com. Hello and welcome to the Paranormal Sideshow. I'm your host, John Edwards, and joined as always by my lovely wife, Stacy. Hello. And we... Got to enjoy some beach pizza this week. We did. Oh, my God. <laughs> the it, calories don't count, beach the calories, pizza. <laughs> it's at the beach. That's right. It's just like having, you know, like uh, affairs. <laughs> as long as at the beach, it doesn't matter. It doesn't count. That's right. It was really nice. The beach pizza is open now. Yes. So that was just fan fabulous. Yes. And also, pure fries. Yes, pure fries was open. Delicious fries. And they're somewhat organic. I had this <laughs> argument with somebody. It wasn't really an argument. It was more of a, me explaining mm -hmm. the fact that I've seen on their website, uh -huh. since Pure Fries have been around since the 1800s, mm -hmm. and they like had some kind of like uh, sea wraith come and tear down the building the first time and the second <laughs> time. I didn't really, I kind of skimmed the story. Right. And that's what I normally do. Mm -hmm. uh, the second time there was yeah, Thor... Right, something right. cracking and ball, yeah, I'm cracking and you know all that stuff. And then so they moved it on to shore mm -hmm. off the pier, but still call it pier fries. It's like right at the pier fries. Mm -hmm. um, it's but like it should be called like one block from the pier fries. It's not even a block. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. at the beginning of the pier. <laughs> but you know, people, I think it's cool that people's like great grandfather mm -hmm. brought their grandfather. You mm -hmm. know, they, I mean, it's it's really cool, right? Right. But there was like this big picture where they were on top this mound of potatoes that <laughs> that, that, that they had personally went and bought or mm -hmm. got or stole, whatever. Right. And, um, you know, and also I found out mm -hmm. about these giant potatoes in the place they call the county in Maine, uh, which is on up. For those of you who don't know, it's the it's the land that time forgot. <laughs> uh, you get to Maine and you're like, oh, this is rural. This is nice. This is the coin. My God, it's like 1953, right? Mm -hmm. And then you get to the county <laughs> and you're like, oh, and this is nice. <laughs> this is cool. Uh, mommy <laughs> it's a little weird uh, uh, it's really you, sweet though i mean it's really cool and there's places you can go pick this stuff and they mm -hmm. trust you and what, what exactly do you mean by giant potatoes i mean like on a ratio as a compared to a potato i see in a store oh okay i see i see um they're much bigger oh, and okay. um they're supposed to be really good mm. and and i don't understand how they grow because the ground's frozen i don't know well i guess we could just drive up to the county and maybe get some. So it, it makes it organic, mm -hmm. right? And no, the, the pure fries. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there's that grease thing and all that, but <laughs> and the seasoning, but my God, it's so good. <laughs> They're delicious. They are so good. And that mm -hmm. pizza, mm -hmm. that pizza is so greasy and nasty and good. But the when slices you're at, are huge. It's weird. You're at the beach. You're <laughs> at the beach and it feels like it doesn't count. Like it doesn't matter. Does it matter that it's like off season? I don't, it still doesn't count. I, I don't think it. I don't think it, I lost weight. <laughs> That's true. You did. I ate all that pizza and all this pure fries. Next morning, I lost three pounds. <laughs> it's it, magic. It makes no sense magic whatsoever. Food. <laughs> we we were on the beach and um, walking around and, and and you know looking for things. We all we're always looking for artifacts and stuff because you know what you're going to find one if you keep looking. You're always looking. Somebody's got to find it. Why right. not? Why not? Why not us? Exactly. A little Seattle Seahawks there. <laughs> why not us? Um, but you know, I mean, we were looking in this. We had this like tenacious little tramp <laughs> in front of us, 
And I always say, I always love to go look for the shells. And, you know, you're probably not the first person on the beach when it's, you know, two in the afternoon. Right. But you, you like to think you are. And it's fun. <laughs> and you're looking around and you're not even looking up. You're not looking left. You're not looking right. You're looking down. at, You're looking at, at seashells. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're us. And we're walking, thinking, oh, hey, look at that. Look at that rope. Isn't that cool? Look at that driftwood. Oh, honey, we should take this home and build something with it. You know? Right. All the things that people live near the ocean say. Right. A lot. Mm -hmm. So we're walking through. And this girl, this thing, Little Miss Thing, <laughs> was in front of us. And she was just like, ew. What, what was it? That she found a sand dollar. Yeah, she was she like maybe three or four feet in front of us. And so she found like a sand dollar. And she found all this really cool stuff. And she was like showing it to her friend going, look at all this stuff yeah, I found. Yeah, but she was like a pro, like a beachcomb pro. She was jumping in the water and jumping back out. Well, the funniest part was we decided we wanted to go past her because to get to the part of the beach that she hadn't looked at yet. Yeah. And it's like every time we sped up. She would speed up. Yeah. <laughs> and we would speed up and she would speed but up. But it was, it was weird. Really it was like she had like a spear and she was going out and like getting it. I mean, she was jumping into the water and you got to understand it's it's still Maine. Yeah. And even though this is the first time it's went above 60 degrees, uh -huh. the frozen North Atlantic does not agree with that. Yeah, um, we did not get in the water. The water was probably 30 degrees. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah. It, the water is always freezing in the summer. It might, you know, maybe if it gets to 80 degrees, mm -hmm. the water, 40. It's cold. It's cold. Mm -hmm. It's it's terrifyingly cold. But you get <laughs> used to it and it, it somehow, it feels rejuvenating. Once, mm -hmm. once you get used to that cold water, mm -hmm. um, it feels good. And the other cool thing about it is a lot of, you know, a lot of things are not in that water. Right, um, right. That, that would be in, you know. Like jellyfish. Yeah, be in warmer water. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's completely cool. It's like hot chocolate fish instead. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, it, it's pretty cool. And, and I want to also, um, thank everyone who gave us responses on the shadow people. Yes. Yes. From the last episode. Holy Kalamazoo. <laughs> so when I asked for, you know, you to share because mm -hmm. sharing is caring, mm -hmm. you yeah, you guys did. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much for that. That's it's been awesome. Thanks for freaking us out and you know giving <laughs> us many sleepless nights and um, all this. I've got some really cool stories. I mean, we had them everything from little people stories, mm -hmm. which I wasn't expecting with the shadow people, and and that was even with a, an avid listener. Mm -hmm. With I got a really cool story about shadow people, and I, and 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 I'm not going to say the name, even though I've said that I've said the name of this person a million times on this show, mm -hmm. but just because. Right. I, I don't know if he really felt comfortable with this story. I it noticed, was kind of personal. I noticed a lot of the stories that we got were people saying that they saw stuff when they were a kid. A lot of them were kid they stories. And they didn't say anything at first. Yeah. And, and oh, I asked my mom about this later and, and she had no explanation. Yeah, our or friend stuff Nicholas, like that. Uh, his story was uh, one, one he'd seen with his sister. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, it, it was weird because he was telling the story about this a few weeks ago with his family. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine they're all beautiful because it's Argentina. <laughs> it, it's, it's, there's something wrong. Somebody signed a deal with the devil. I mean, somebody <laughs> back a long time ago, the first Argentinian. Right. They were like, you know what? Tell you what, you know, we're all going to be beautiful. And um, so anyway, he was telling the story with all his beautiful family. Mm -hmm. We hate you. Um, and <laughs> they, you know, he told him about the story and, and to be serious, he told about the story that I don't think he thought anybody would remember, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, hey, here's a silly story about my childhood. Mm -hmm. And, um, he's like three years old and, um, they seen this shadow thing with, uh, white eyes, I believe, or bright eyes. And, you know, she remembered it mm -hmm. or got really nervous and, you know, nearly cried. And that's, that's how real this paranormal thing is. Mm-hmm. It's, mm -hmm. you know, really get you. And we got a lot of replies from, from many people. It really struck a chord. And something else I think that struck a chord with people, mm -hmm. no fear, we're we're going to keep attempting to be funny. I won't go as far as saying we're funny, <laughs> but, you know. But we try. Last week we were, we got pretty serious. We did. And we, we did. had some personal stories mm -hmm. um, because some, some of those shadow people stories are very close to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it was supposed to be the Art Bell tribute show. Right. And I think we did art correct. Mm -hmm. I think we did art right mm -hmm. because we gave an episode that was filled with drama, <laughs> cliffhangers, yep. and, and real true scary stories. Yes. 
So, you know, I think that this episode, Mm -hmm. we have decided to go into a subject a little bit later on Mm -hmm. that also has some true stories on our end that, you know, I think that you guys need to know. Uh, I know in the past we've told some, we've shared some uh, stories on the show. And and you know what? Today, tonight, wherever, whatever it may be, wherever you are, (laughs) um, we may be sharing something that we've said before. But, Mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, the thing about it is they're powerful, intense, true stories. And speaking of that, Nick Redfern, you know how he turns out a couple of books a a month Mm -hmm. usually? Yes. Uh, He has one coming out that Mm -hmm. is another one I've got to have. I think I know which one you're talking about. I think I saw it, something about it today. Yeah, it just triggered in my head. Yeah, it's about, it's got all the like men in black, it's women got, in black, it's like, black eyed kids. Yeah, it's yeah. got everything. And I was mm-hmm. just thinking about our personal stories and I was thinking about our men in black, mm-hmm. somewhat men in black, somewhat black eyed kid story. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it would fall more into black eyed kid story. And for those of you long time listeners know, it's the story. I've got a chapter in my book, uh, which has not been really written and not released. <laughs> uh, it's not because of me. They're They're holding it for something. Um, but, uh, and by they just let your imagination run wild, (laughs) but there's this, uh, you know, story that happened where this couple, you know, just beats on the door. I'm I'm there with the baby, which is now 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, but a a baby at the time, just beating on the door, this couple, they had clothes from out of time. It was just a damn 100% story that you would see on some unsolved mystery show. Mm Mm-hmm. And they were cackling and laughing, natural born killer style. You know, the car was parked in the road, getaway style, Mm -hmm. Um, but just beating on the door, beating on the door. And I could see the daylight popping through the door. Mm -hmm. Um, When you push on a door hard enough and there's sun on the other side, Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the light somewhat through the crack of the door, through the crack of the door. Mm -hmm. And that is how terrifying it was, was because I was I was stuck in a place I didn't want to move because I didn't want them to even hear that I was in there. That and I never get that way. Mm-hmm. Never do I get that way ever about anything. If you knock on my door, you beat on my door, you 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 can bring something to my door. If I had to take a bullet, I would take a bullet for my family I, always. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I will charge through that door, which I've done many times. Mm-hmm. I will run outside in my underwear <laughs> with my fist up. And, and, you know, you can ask Stacy. I'll grab whatever's there, a steak knife, a ball bat, um, one of the kids, yeah, whatever. Something, whatever's there. And um, I didn't I didn't do that this day. I, it, you, you know sometimes. Sometimes you know when there's something wrong. And, you know, I, I remember I, it, I was laying in bed and, and, and I, I heard the car. And, and in this neighborhood that we were in, you knew if a car came down into the circle we were on. Uh, we were on the way to the circle um, and and you could just hear everything. And I just knew and and I got up and I was walking toward that the living room and and I could hear them try the door, the, the bottom basement door first. Mm-hmm. And then they, they made it up to our front door mm-hmm. and were beating on it and laughing. And I just remember them being out of time. They looked like they were from the 70s or maybe the late 60s. Uh, maybe they were part of like Charlie Manson's uh, cult. <laughs> That's kind of what they looked like, man. And, right. and the, they were just beating like fist, both of them, guy and girl, mm-hmm. just beating on that door and just like, ha, 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 Just, I mean, heads going back, laughing and beating the crap out of it. Mm-hmm. And it was just, it was so... It was so weird, and and I remember just looking out, just barely, you know, like you'll you'll move the shades, hoping that you don't disturb the shade part of it that much, right? And, and looking out, and I remember just thinking, my God, they're going to come through that door, you know, and and the next thing I know, they're gone, um, and, and I mean they're just gone, and when it was done, it was like, it was one of those things where you feel like you've been violated. Mm-hmm. Um, or you don't really know exactly what happened or why you reacted the way you did. And, it, and I, you know, I'm not embarrassed by it at all because it's the only time I can ever remember being that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was, I was scared and it was just, it was this insane amount of fear. 
inside of me. But after it happened, I, I was like, I don't know what that was. And and then later on, you know, uh, we had a lot of the Black Eyed Kid stuff with David Weatherly when we met mm-hmm. when we met him in like 2010, and and you know that was probably the closest relatable stories mm-hmm. that that I had mm-hmm. to that. But just cool stuff, and you know we'll have some more things later in the show that are are along those lines. You know that some uh, weird stuff. Yeah, some some pretty weird stuff, mm-hmm. but nothing as weird as. Pure com. That's where you go find everything weird. On Facebook.com it's slash Paranormal Sideshow. My God, the weirdness on there. You can, you know, ain't lying on that. On the Twitter, it's at Sideshow97. I find all kinds of weird on the Twitter. In fact, the, most of the tweeters on there look pretty strange, <laughs> but it's okay. Everybody's tweeters a different size. On Instagram, hot tweeter damn. I <laughs> see what I did there. It's John and Stacey Edwards. YouTube.com slash Paranormal Sideshow. That's where we'll eventually feel like doing a vlog again. That's a joke. <laughs> I'm already filming for the next vlog. I was actually filming through a town the other day with Stacy, and we said things. And then we went to this really weird graveyard uh, where it didn't say anything about being a graveyard. There was a big stone that said friends. <laughs> yeah, it was very strange. Very creepy. And the graves are from like 1850, and they didn't have last names. They had first names. No, and the ground was really soft. Like and, the graves are coming and up. And all the graves were outlined like they were maybe coming up. Absolutely. It was weird. Yeah. Yeah. So much so we're not even gonna talk about that. Yeah, that's that's it. That's all. That's a tease. But you know, if you like teases, you need to like us, follow us, subscribe to us. And and like I said, Sharon is Karen. So please share our episode, share our Facebook, get those numbers up, tell your friends, tell your enemies, especially your enemies. Uh, but however you like the podcast, whether it's listening to iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio. Wherever you listen, that's where we hide. That's where we wait. That's where we're going to take your soul. <laughs> but you also need to showcase your inner weird. You know how you do that, Stacey? I think that I do. Uh, well, do you want to share it with us? <laughs> you can get a t-shirt. Exactly. You can get a t-shirt, <laughs> but not just any t-shirt. You can get your own Paranormal Sideshow t-shirt with yes. wonderful original designs. I was thinking of adding a new one. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we we've had and thank you to everybody so much that has purchased a T-shirt. Mm-hmm. We really appreciate it. Um, every bit of it goes back in. Mm-hmm. I can guarantee you that. Um, tpublic dot com slash user slash paranormal sideshow. That's t e e public dot com slash user slash paranormal sideshow. And you can also find that on paranormal sideshow dot com, where you can also find my lovely wife's links to all the stories if you like to play the game at home you can follow <laughs> right along listen to listen to the show and go along with the uh links and mm-hmm. it's actually kind of fun to listen to it that way because you can follow everything that she's uh talking about or that we're talking about not throw crazy stuff in just just so she has to put a link up <laughs> and you know what uh, sometimes it's fun to play the game of things she says she's going to put a link for that she forgets Yes, so, that uh, does happen. If that if that happens, please let us know, and uh, we'll we'll keep the tally going and see who who the winner is. But this T shirt design I was thinking of, mm-hmm. this was pretty funny. Okay. Well, I thought it was funny, but I couldn't think of a way to do it. Okay. I was going to have a baseball scoreboard, right? And have like paranormal sideshow, mm-hmm. and then have Armageddon, <laughs> and have how many times we won. Uh-huh. And how many times the world didn't end? Right, right. Instead of <laughs> instead of innings, have dates. You know, right, right. Because you remember we we had to go through there was there was a couple before the 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 2012 thing, and then we had the big 2012 deal. Right. Um. And then after that, we've had so many Armageddon's. <laughs> we've had. Um. I remember that one old cat that used to. He was kind of like the David Mead dude. Mm-hmm. You had one guy you used to keep up with, and you were like, ah, oh, it's yeah. in, in the I world remember. again. You remember him? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. He. I think he was a comet. Uh, guy, wasn't he? He was thinking a comet was going to come in and kill us. I think it was something like that. There was something that was, was supposed to come in. Some, yeah. Something weird. You loved that one. And, um, <laughs> because he, he's the same as David Mead. He would just keep, every time it didn't happen, he'd just be like, oh, no, it must be this day. And like so, he was just randomly picking them. So what do you think David Mead's doing right now? Um, Trying to decide when the next end of the world is going to be. You don't think? Oh, we just spoiled the update. The world didn't end. Oh, I'm What's sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I think everybody knew. I'm they were on kidding. the edge of their seats. <laughs> I know. Gosh, the world <laughs> they really needed to know. <laughs> yeah, surprise. <laughs> well, I mean, at least it was 
he predicted that it was the end of the world. If he had just said it was the rapture, we'd be like, did it happen? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> wow. Wow. You know, I was just thinking that would be a, kind of a cool shirt. Um, even mm -hmm. even like a scroll undone mm -hmm. that says, you know, Armageddon has the dates marked out. Right. And then we could just put an erroneous date. <laughs> like, no, because with our luck, it would then happen. No, I mean, that would date. be cool, though. Like, like, let's put the dates that didn't happen. Right. We'll mark them out. Uh-huh. And then let's just do specialized dates. Like, like we'll come up with like four or five dates <laughs> and we'll just do a run where only one shirt has the one date. Uh -huh. And I don't know, it'd be some stuff like that'd be just cool. Pick a date out of the hat. If we could find out when people's birth dates were that ordered the shirt <laughs> and like do their birth date as the, as the last one. As the end of the world. As the end of the world. I don't know. Oh, I like stuff funny. like that. I think, I think that, that we should just go nuts in a couple of years and just start predicting the end of the world. Okay. I mean, and get a little cult, go to the desert. <laughs> that doesn't work. We'll get another cult and go like to India or something. Because obviously people will follow. Right. You know, it, I don't know how believable this David Mead guy is. But obviously. <laughs> obviously some people buy some, into it. Some people buy into it. You know, if he keeps predicting, eventually he might actually be right. No, no. <laughs> no, I think at this point that that God <laughs> would be like, no, no. Rescheduling it. Yeah. No, he picked the day. I'm going to reschedule. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no. Peter, <laughs> Peter, you need to change that date. You know, because he sits there and watches everything. Everybody wants. It takes a lot of time. It does. Um, I'm sure there's like huge DVR systems going on. <laughs> but anyway, speaking of DVR systems, it's time for some paranormal news. All right, let's get to the news. Let's. Hey. Yes. I got to stop you. Okay. I got to talk about some weird stuff that's been happening. Okay. I was going to put this in the monologue, but I didn't. Okay. Well, we can just stick it in right here. Oh. No big deal. <laughs> Sounds good to me, baby. <laughs> um. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> the, uh, the uh, wow. <laughs> Hold on. Let me recover. Okay. Um. So there's been some weird stuff going on. Mm -hmm. Weird, 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 weird stuff. Mm -hmm. We had this mommy thing happen again. Yes. And this has happened before. Yeah. We've, we've chronicled it mm -hmm. quite mm -hmm. a few times. But it just it even just happened today. And I, I heard it twice today. And both times I had just gone down the stairs and I heard someone say mommy. And I thought it was Ariana. and But it wasn't her either time. Yeah, and no, there's not like any TVs on or anything like that. No, no, I was I was with Ariana the last time that you thought it happened mm -hmm. um, earlier, and you know it it's raining today. It's really stormy. I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but it's something to keep in mind next time it happens. I don't know. It was it happened after this other weird thing happened that John completely freaked me out about. But our furnace uh, went off. And he had gone to the bathroom. He's like, there's no hot water. And I was like, okay, well, I'll just go down and check the furnace. And, and it's down under the house. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have a regular basement because we live in Maine, but you have to go outside and you can go under the house and our furnace is there and you have to reset it. So I go to go down under the house. I'm like, I'm going to go into the house and reset the furnace. And he was like, oh, so did the uh, spirits down there turn it off? So you'd have to come down there. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and it was almost dark. Yeah. I was like, oh, crap. Now I got to go down there all by myself in the dark under the house. So I took a flashlight and I went down there and I reset the furnace and everything. And then um, I came back up to the house. And when I came back in the house, I couldn't, it was weird. I had my phone down there with me because I took my phone with me just in case, you know, something happened. And when I came back to the house, I couldn't get my phone to connect to the internet. Like it kept just cutting off right. like three times. Yeah. And then the weird mommy thing happened. Yeah. So I don't know. It was all just very, a bunch of weird stuff right in a row. Yeah. Well, I mean, literally that, I truly believe that's what happened. <laughs> um, I truly, because there's no reason that went off. Mm -mm. Um, no, it was, I, and I, it was fine after I reset it the one time. We, we have, we have messed around in the basement here 
and because of, you know, 1850 house, God knows what's down in that foundation or what's happened down there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's full size. You can walk around down there. It's just you have to go behind the house to get in. Yeah, and it's as big as the house. Oh, yeah. It's under the whole house. And the only thing down there is it's got like part of a cement floor, but most of it's dirt floor. And then there's old stones from like maybe where there was a fireplace in the house Mm -hmm. and, and the old foundation. And and it's just very creepy. Yeah. <laughs> and we have captured, um, uh, paranormally, mm-hmm. that's that's where we've captured the most evidence, mm-hmm. um, but straight up saying names and everything else down there, mm-hmm. uh, it's creepy. It is. It's dark. It's um, It just doesn't feel right. Mm-hmm. Um, some of that's usually because it's dark and creepy. Right, right. Um, I get that. Mm-hmm. But, you know. But it's creepy down there during the day, too, and, and it's yeah. not that dark because there's windows yeah so yeah so i don't know it was just just something i wanted to throw in there especially (laughs) the mommy thing because the mommy thing keeps happening over and over and over it's not just this place Mm -mm. that's happened for years Mm -hmm. it's it's really nuts and of course we've had this mysterious cat that keeps showing up at the house yeah the cat tried saving you today (laughs) it showed up today before all this furnace thing happened and i was trying to go around the back of the house uh, to do something else and the cat just showed up out of nowhere, just came running over and like kept getting in my path. Like he didn't want me to go that direction or something. It was very strange. Yeah, it was really it was weird because I was at work and when I, when I got home this evening, mm-hmm. um, you know, I found out about that and then all this other stuff happened. So I don't know, interesting stuff. And mm-hmm. we just always throw it in. It's good to chronicle that stuff because you never yes. know when we're going to go missing. <laughs> so. And somebody can pick up the pattern of all the weird things that happen. Yeah, so I can go looking in the basement <laughs> for the holes. Oh, let's not even joke about that. All right. Okay, so let's go on to our first story. Let's. So this is kind of an interesting story, and I saw this a couple different places. Um, so I wasn't going to get it at first because it was just in, like, the sun, but I saw it mm-hmm. in a couple other places, so mm-hmm. it seems like it's a legitimate story. There is this journalist. His name is Curtis Waltman, and he was writing to the Washington State Fusion Center to get like Freedom of Information Act kind of request. And he wanted some information about Antifa and white supremacist group for something he was writing oh. uh, for uh, a news organization called Muckrock. So in this information that he got, he ended up getting a file that was titled EM Effects on Human Body. It was a zip file. Right. And inside there were all these weird documents. One was like psychoelectronic weapon effects on the human body. And it was like a human body and all these different things that happened if the government used some kind of, you know, electronic weapon against you. Right. There was one uh, entitled remote mind control uh, or remote brain map- mapping, kind of using the cellular network. Right. Things like that. And so this article that I read said that some of these images did, appeared to be part of an article that was in a magazine called Nexus. Mm. And Nexus is an Australian magazine that's kind of focused on unexplained conspiracy theories, alternative medicine, you know, weird stuff. Yeah, sounds like I need to subscribe. Yeah. And it covered this case um, in 1996 uh, by this guy named Mr. Aqui. If that's your real name. Uh, yeah. And he had some kind of um, lawsuit against the NSA claiming that the NSA had the ability to assassinate U.S. citizens, you know, covertly and and run psychological control operations. Seriously, Mr. Aqui was assassinated. (laughs) And so he was trying to uh, do this lawsuit. And so at the end of this article, they tried calling him to find out what the outcome of that article was, and he wouldn't even talk to them. He was like, I'm not supposed to talk about that. And he hung Mm. up. So these documents, these no, pictures. No, crap, really. Yeah, really. These documents and these pictures that were in this file, they're not like, gov- it, they don't look like government issued documents, and especially since they were part of this article. No, but, they look like but I the drew them in the other room. But the government had them yeah. or was collecting them for whatever reason. And all of them were in the zip file that accidentally got sent to this journalist doing a story it on something completely different. We have the worst security. <laughs> in, I mean, that's like that hacker from freaking Britain that, you know. Right. I mean, it wasn't even that much of a hacker. He just it went in through a back door uh-huh. and, you know, got the whole <laughs> secret UF, the space program. And everything. So I don't know. I thought that was kind of an interesting story just Very because we do talk about that, how they mess up a lot and send out. I mean, the best thing that ever happened to us is the Freedom of Information Act, because yeah, apparently well, people um, mess up all the time. You always get a bonus. I mean, it, you need to go look at this, though. 
-hmm. those diagrams. I mean, yeah, definitely look at the diagrams. They're very interesting. And if you guys have had anything happening like we have, mm -hmm. um, at least I have. So the last couple of years, I've had some some wicked tinnitus mm -hmm. and um, some some really big buzzing in the ear. And I don't know if it has anything to do with like gifts or or, you know, what happened or even the electronics in the room. But, man, mm -hmm. it feels like it feels like there's. You know, hey, have a conspiracy podcast, <laughs> get some ringing in the ears. My favorite one was the thing that said that uh, you get tired all of a sudden and mm -hmm. just need to sleep because that's me. <laughs> yeah, you're like narcoleptic Nancy. I mean, you're just yeah. all, you know, awake one second and then the next second. It's like, I just get tired. I can't help it. Yeah. I don't know. It was crazy, but definitely go look at it. It makes me want to just start filing Freedom of Information Act requests for random things just to see if I get something I'm not supposed to get. Yeah, I mean, you should. <laughs> I think it was funny. Um, I didn't take the story, but I saw a story earlier. I think you sent it to me that this guy requested files from in Canada from the Canadian yes, government. Yes, it was like yes. seven hundred and eighty thousand documents. Yes, and he wanted to know why it was taking so long, and they had sent him a letter saying that it would take eight hundred years. They said it would take eight hundred years, but <laughs> then they were like, "Oh, that's a typo. It's going to take eighty years. Eighty years, <laughs> like that's better. I know, eighty years. But there, I mean, that was like." Almost a million documents, like three quarters of a million documents. That's a lot of stuff. Well, you would think that, I mean, are they really like all written out? In, no, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it looks like they could probably send the files, right? <laughs> yeah, like this is the computer aid. You'd think so, but. And and, and what is he going to do with those documents? I don't know. I mean, how long would it take you to read? Quite a long time. How many documents? I mean, unless you had a team of, I don't know, 780,000 people. <laughs> You know, I don't, I, it's very strange. Uh, the whole, the whole thing was strange and mm -hmm. I got a tickle out of the 800 year thing. Yes. I thought that was cool. Cause that's what I would be. If I was in a government office, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have this trouble with these people trying to get information. <laughs> if I was over that office, you'd be calling and trying to give me a hard time, buddy. <laughs> I'll be like, oh yes, sir. Mr. Johnson, <laughs> I am doing that right now. It's on the list. You're in the queue. <laughs> You're in the queue. Yeah. <laughs> you you will you will be getting that information. In fact, we're going to go ahead and throw in who really killed the uh, Kennedy. <laughs> Just for having to wait. <laughs> yeah. We and, and we might even let you know where Jimmy Hoff is buried. <laughs> Yeah, we know all that. I would just mess with them so bad. So oh, bad. That's funny. <laughs> and then make them wait 800 years. Yes, 800 total years. <clears throat> uh, anyway. <laughs> all right, well, let's go on to the next story. Uh, this I got this story because in the headline, it actually says that scientists are baffled. Uh, of course. It says mysterious Arctic There's ice holes baffle scientists. The ice holes? Ice holes. <laughs> <laughs> Arctic ice holes. <laughs> I mean, I knew the Arctic people weren't exactly the nicest people in the world, but you don't have to call them ice holes. <laughs> Their attitude just baffles It's really cold. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's a problem when it's dark a whole lot. <laughs> ice holes. That's what it says. It's ridiculous. Just, I don't even want to hear the story. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Let me change it. <clears throat> Mysterious Arctic holes in the ice baffle scientists. Is that better? <laughs> yes, it's it's. Oh. Okay, so there is this operation. It's, it's NASA's ice Operation holes. Ice Bridge. It's a mission. Does the stupid article actually say "ice holes" in the title? <laughs> it does. I, I read you the exact title, and the funny thing is, is I didn't even put that together when I was getting <laughs> the article. I'm sorry. I guess I didn't say it out loud. It's one of those things you got to say it out loud. Yeah, but when you say it out loud, <laughs> "ice holes" doesn't sound right. So, so Operation Ice Ice Bridge. It's an <laughs> airborne mission that's flown annually over the polar regions and they take pictures and they measure the ice and that sort of thing. Right. So while they were flying over the eastern Beaufort Sea, um, they had actually seen something they had never seen before, which were these odd crater-like holes in the ice. There was like three of them. Mm. And they were really strange. They had no idea what they were. Um, even the scientist was like, I've never seen anything like that before. So the first likely explanation that they came up with was that they thought maybe seals were poking through the ice. <laughs> what the it says they're, they're known to gnaw through the ice to have breathing holes. Right. And sometimes they go up on the ice to rest. So they I thought just that pictured <laughs> like the, the saw. Just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> so, but then when they flew over the area again, they noticed that the holes were really large, like too large for it to be a seal. So they changed their explanation to it not being seals, but that it's more likely caused by bowhead whales. Oh, which oh. I think have a little harder time using the saw because they're so big. But yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> but that's the that's the official explanation. <laughs> it's, you know that it's a couple of those, like a couple of the guys that are on the ship that that drive the scientists down there <laughs> are freaking ice fishing. They got like a couple Something of like that. they got a couple of manas and they got like a a, a twelve pack out there. You know, they're like oh yeah, oh yeah. Tom Brady gonna go to goodness. Yeah, I don't see how. <laughs> Well, I, it's a cool picture. You can go look at it. And they were baffled about it. And yes. I mean, they have an explanation. They're so. stealing our shtick. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Scientists are baffled. Get your shirt now. <laughs> tpublic.com right, so. slash user slash paranormal sideshow. I feel like I have to get a scientists are baffled story. Every week now. Well, no, that's mistake. why it's so funny because <laughs> they're always, but they're in a perpetual state of baffle. It's just funny that every news outlet uses that term yeah. to explain scientists. If I was a scientist, I'd be so pissed off. <laughs> it's like I am not baffled. <laughs> I mean, if you like, do not generalize what I do, I'm not that baffled. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move on to this next story. This is a story about the documentary, The Devil and Father Amorth. I think we talked about this before mm -hmm. on a previous episode. Um, William Friedkin uh, was doing this documentary where he actually got to film a real live exorcism. Right. That was done by this father. And it's actually been released. It was just released a couple days ago. I think you can find it on some different streaming platforms. Now, we haven't actually had a chance to watch it yet. It's no. only like 68 minutes. Um, and it, it features like some interviews and some backstory, some history on him. Um, he talks about the exorcist some in it. And then the actual filming of this particular exorcism done by the father. Now, I'm going to link to this story on it, but I'm also going to link to the story done by the National Catholic Register. Because, you know, Catholics, they like to chime in on anything that has to do with Catholics. Right, obviously, you know, like obviously yeah. Movies and things like that. Like, they pay close attention to mm -hmm. that. And uh, I will warn you that if you read this article in the National Catholic Register, it does um, kind of break down the, the documentary a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so it's going to tell you things that happen in it. And it gives, you know, the guy writing it, the priest writing it, gives his opinion on it. And it was it was some good, some bad. He kind of had mixed feelings on yeah, it. Well. Obviously, but um, I mean, the thing about the Catholic needing to comment on so much stuff mm -hmm. that they're the go to. Right. Uh, so if you're right. making a horror movie, mm -hmm. are you going to put a Southern Baptist preacher in there or are you going to put a Catholic mm -hmm. priest? Exactly. You're always going to use a Catholic priest. So they are used in almost every horror movie exclusively. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They're used in, in, in most. It, it's always that kind of stuff, though. It's always that kind of imagery. Now, this is based on factual things right and like this is a documentary doc actual documentary yeah it's an actual documentary um they see they did say things like the actual exorcism was not very it wasn't overdone so it was very genuine right like it wasn't like a movie you know spit pea soup head spinning around climbing the walls right, kind of right right right, right. <laughs> and it did say that i think some of the down that he had was that it didn't go into any kind of talking about how you get into that situation, like, you know, by... What did you do to cause this? Right, right. You know, uh, Which it wasn't really the point of the documentary. The oppression, the... Um, mm -hmm. Like involvement in occult activity. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Um, it didn't touch on any of that. And I don't think that it was very... Make it twister. I don't think that it was very overly religious. Like, I don't think that they talked about... Well, God and Jesus all that much. They probably or as much to as they thought. Appeal to a wider audience. Right, right. And it is not I mean, it's only a little over an hour. So, you know, he just had this one time frame that he had to, you know, he was fitting it in. So I'll, like I said, I'm I'm gonna reserve judgment because I haven't actually seen it. Yeah. But uh it was still a really interesting article just to, to see the different viewpoints. So we're definitely gonna have to check that out. And it, watch it. I'll tell you, mm -hmm. we're not going to have to check anything out. <laughs> if we keep hearing mommy in the house, we're just going to have, a, you know, fa Father Hour Part 2, <laughs> the Paranormal Sideshow Years. Um, well, I, I don't particularly want Father Amworth because he passed away. Well. So maybe a different father. <laughs> father Amworth. 
<laughs> um, you know, we we had some crazy stuff happen in this this room last time. So that's true. That's true. Um, you know, um, speaking of that, mm-hmm. I know some people clearly heard the EVP at the first. Yes. Of the last episode. Yes. Clearly, mm-hmm. some people couldn't hear it, no matter what they did. Yes. Well, I understand that. And here's the weird thing with that. Mm-hmm. We heard it when it happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. We totally heard it when it happened. Mm-hmm. When it happened, it made us shut our equipment off. Yeah. And we went back and listened to it right then. Mm-hmm. And we're like, holy cow, it's there. It's loud. My God. Mm-hmm. And Stacy, as we've talked, we've chronicled this. Stacy will throw out anything that if it seems like it's a sniff or queef or whatever, mm-hmm. she's like, oh, let me hear that again. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Not gonna not gonna use that. This was so clear, she was excited. Mm-hmm. She was like, Oh yeah, we'll definitely be able to make out what that says later. And I was like, Well, mm-hmm. let's just let them make it out. Right. So we went back to listen to this when she was doing editing. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I can't, I don't hear it. Yeah, I cut like a big section out and I was so, like, it's here somewhere. <laughs> so she sent it to me. She sent me the clip. And I'm like, I don't hear it. <laughs> And we didn't hear it. We got really mad. Mm-hmm. We're like, we know where this was. Mm-hmm. It was right after beans, the word beans, because I said spill the beans. Mm-hmm. And right before I said mail art. or art. Sorry. Yeah. I think it was actually part of it's over top of when you're talking. Yeah. It, yeah. It, when I'm doing the spill the beans thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it was it was not there. But then about five, ten minutes later, we're listening to it again. And the damn thing was there. <laughs> It was so strange. It was completely odd. And and this kind of thing's happened to us before. Now, this is strange. Mm-hmm. When it's already recorded, how could it disappear and how could it come back, right? So it's uh, I'll explain how that can happen. It's called paranormal. <laughs> and whatever happened, happened. So if you didn't hear it last week, why don't you go back and listen to that part again? <laughs> just just I'm just wanting you to mm-hmm. go back and listen to that part again. Uh, and again, I'll be saying something like uh, spill the beans. Mm-hmm. As soon as I'm saying spill the beans, be listening closely because as soon as I, that's done, you're going to hear before I say art. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear this. OK. Yes. So if you didn't hear it before and you do hear it this next time, it, it's funny. We, we're not going to uh, we're not going to go through and magnify something. We're not going to do any kind of like cheesy crap. Whether you hear it or not, it mm-hmm. really doesn't matter to us. Right. We heard it as it happened. And I don't mm-hmm. mean that in any other way than I love you. But, you know, you guys would be the same way. Mm-hmm. If, if it happens to you, it happens to you. And if, if somebody else can share mm-hmm. that, that's wonderful. Yes. I know for a fact we have many EVPs that have happened through many of our shows mm-hmm. that, that we never say anything about. It's always fun for us because we're always, Stacey will come to me and she'll be editing and she'll be, as I've told you guys, she'll have like a bone sticking through her hair and she'll <laughs> she'll come upstairs. She's half shaking, look like a meth head. And, and she'll, <laughs> she'll just be like, hey, 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 all makeup's wore off and everything. Freaking, you know, panties on top of her head and all this stuff. And uh, she'll be like, yeah, hey, you want to listen to this? You want to listen to this? <laughs> I'm like, sure. And she's like, just tell me, just tell, just tell me what you hear. And I'll listen, you know, and I'll hear something. You know, it'll be like, you know, your mother's excellent. You know, whatever. <laughs> and she's like, should we say something? No, no, no. We should never say anything. <laughs> Let's let them hear it, them find it. And a lot of times they do. So mm-hmm. cool stuff. I just wanted to throw that in. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on to this next story. And this is a story about a man. Father Amor is dead. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, he would be very welcome here because I'm pretty sure that we have some kind of reverend or some kind of preacher spirit here. Because anytime I'm in the kitchen, I get hymns in my head. Okay, so we know for a fact that there was (laughs) a preacher that lived here. That's right. That's right. He was the first. Mm Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and he was he he built the house, right? So I do remember that. Yes, um, you know we get hymns in our heads. I don't know how many times I've sang "Bringing Into Sheaves." Gosh, that one. That's yeah, that's the one. And I'll be in the kitchen, and all of a sudden I'll just be singing it. And I'll be, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. should be singing that. Well, can you imagine <laughs> what it's like to be the preacher stuck in our house? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, can you imagine our paganistic like? <laughs> It, He's you're, just trying to save us. That's you're all. playing reverse cowgirl, and we're you know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> all right. 
Okay, so this next story is about a UFO sighting that this guy oh. has. <laughs> oh, wow. It's like a whistleblower, like a guy that was in the service, and he's decided to come I'm just clean about his... I'm just thinking of us winning a Paranormal Podcast Award. <laughs> <laughs> just like... <laughs> Most inappropriate references. Oh, God. Um, so George... Innuendo Award goes to <laughs> John and Stacey Edwards of ParanormalSideshow.com. Yes, they had the most subscribers, but we can't give them anything serious. <laughs> All right. So this guy's name is George Filer III. He's 82 now. Oh. And he serves currently serves as the New Jersey director of MUFON. Okay. Okay. All right. So, but he... Hi, was, George! He was a pilot. <laughs> And if you're listening, there's a video of him detailing this account um, with a news outlet called Asbury Park Press, yes. which is part of the USA Today Network. And so I'm going to link to this and you can watch the video. It's him just doing an interview with this reporter from Asbury Park Press. And he was talking about uh, on a refueling trip, this uh, UFO they saw him and his co-pilot. And they thought it was a bridge, like, because there was a bunch of lights going across. But then when they got closer to it, they could still see the lights off in the distance. And it was kind of like a cruise ship you would see at night, you know, with the lights going all the way across. And when they got about five miles from it, it just shot up into space. Mm. And so it's he said they were doing over 400 miles an hour. And he, he you know, guesses that it was doing 10 or 20 times their speed. And it was huge, like mothership huge. Right. That kind of thing. So they were convinced that it was not ours, that it was definitely <laughs> really? something from somewhere else. That always tickles and, me. And uh, he went on camera and gave his experience. So it's really cool. It's a cool little video. That is cool. It's very cool. Yeah. So you have to go and watch that. You know, I like to hire 80 plus year olds. Do you? Yeah. I hire To them. do what? Well, at my work, I can't <laughs> tell you. Um, hashtag Bruce Wayne job. Um, oh, I see. At my work, we have certain part-time positions that are wonderful for people of that age. Right. And the reason I hire, um, if I can, 65 plus, but I love the 80-year-olds. Right. Um, 65 plus. And I think they've got a network where they, they must like go through like the the local like breakfast place and, and <laughs> they're like, Hey, that, uh, you know, that, that regional manager, he's, he's uh, cause I get it quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They got the best work ethic of yes. that. You, you can never imagine. All right. I hired, I hired these guys. They're so sweet. Mm -hmm. Most of them have been at home with their wives for 10 or 15 years. <laughs> right. And they're so ready to come work for minimum wage. Right. Like, they're so happy. And plus minimum wage is like 14 times more than they made. <laughs> You know, back when they were still working. So right. they come up there and they're just like, oh, my God, $11. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? And I'm like, no, it's just because we think a lot of you. And um, no, that's the, of course, that's not what I'm like. I know. Um, anyway, I direct them to be hired. I don't do the hiring myself. Um, so but I love these guys mm -hmm. and uh, because their work ethic, it, it's a, it's from a different bygone era. Right. When people cared about their job mm -hmm. and they took pride, they didn't care what they did. Mm -hmm. They took pride in what they did and yeah, they could, they could can dog food. Right. And they would be so proud about canning that dog food. They would mm -hmm. know everything about the dog food they canned, the company that it was from, mm -hmm. uh, the dog that took the picture that was on the label, <laughs> you know, what kind of glue is used on the label. I'm right. serious. These, no, I know. Th these guys are like that. And there's something about that that touches my heart. It mm -hmm. makes me love that bygone era. That, And that's why I'm the way I am. Like, I come home and I talk about work, mm -hmm. unless it's been a horrible day right and then right. everybody knows don't talk to daddy um <laughs> but it's it I, I love having that that sense of pride mm -hmm. about what i do and, and this is just a side note that i'll just throw one in there you, you you appreciate you appreciate when you're in business anyone who really cares right you know, really cares about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing if you listen to these people. So many times the elderly are brushed away. Mm -hmm. So so many times we, we're like, oh, look at this sweet old couple or something. <laughs> and we're not thinking about the fact that couple has so many life stories built mm -hmm. into that. So many amazing adventures. So many weird things that have happened to them. So many cool, amazing stories, right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that, that they've lived mm -hmm. and they know. And so Tons many of life experience. Yeah. So many times we just brush by that mm -hmm. and, and dismiss it. Mm -hmm. 
Um, that's 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 the part that really gets me. And and they have so much to give. They really do. So there you go. There's my <laughs> there's my PSA for for this episode. There you go. Um, go out and be nice to uh, an elderly person. Are you gonna want to still be working when you're eighty something? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't want to be. I don't be working when I'm forty something. <laughs> it's it's. I'll, Eventually, by the time we're eighty, you're gonna be like, I gotta get out of this house. Yeah, no, it's um, <laughs> I, I've 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 got goals. My my goals are pretty normal. I want to be the CEO of my company. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't I don't foresee any reason. I think I feel they should have already made me. Right. I you know if, if they knew what I know. <laughs> It, then, then you know they would they would have already handed me the keys, right? Um, they'd be like, oh yeah, you know how this engine runs. <laughs> uh, you go ahead and do it, but it's okay. I'll keep being the best at everything I do until somebody figures it out. <laughs> All right, well, let's move on. Let's. Okay, so this next story is about a haunted store. Oh, and I've had is, plenty of these. <laughs> so this is about uh, Toys R Us in Sunnyvale. This is in Bay Area. California. Sunnyvale. Does Buffy <laughs> live there? Sunnyvale, probably. Um, and so this store, you know, is closing yeah, because all the Toys R Us are closed. Uh, are closing. That, that's, yeah. that's really sad. And that's mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. sad that Toys R Us is gone. It really is. But this particular store, this building, ever since it first opened its doors way back in 1970, um, has actually had paranormal activity. Yeah. And they, they claim that it's haunted. And everybody in that area has you know has some kind of story some everybody that's worked there they all know about the haunted Toys R Us right, building right and so uh, they've got this whole article that it kind of tells you everything that's happened there all the different claims but in 1978 even the psychic Sylvia Brown mm-hmm. went there and did a séance it was I don't think it was for a TV thing maybe or something and she claims that there was the ghost there his name was Johnson. And he was one haunting the store and he was a preacher and a ranch hand in the 1880s on a farm. It used to be a family farm and that he had like a Swedish accent and his first name was like John or Jan or Johan. And I guess his last name was Johnson. John Johnson sounds like an old timey name. And all the people that gathered there like during the seance said that they heard this buzzing noise whenever she was supposedly talking to the spirit. So... I don't know. It's kind of a cool story. Some of the claims are things like uh, toys flying off shelves, hearing whisp- your name whispered, being touched, getting your hair pulled, stuff like that. I honestly think a haunted toy store would be super creepy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's something about kids' toys and dolls and things yeah. and, and ghosts. It's just, yeah. it's really creepy. Yeah, where but. a kid can be a kid. It's, <laughs> uh, I, I tell you, it's... Uh, Mm-hmm. Um, number one, I like the fact that we're honoring Toys R Us one time, you know, on the way out here. But mm-hmm. I like the the store in town that everybody knows is haunted, or mm-hmm. at least the employees, right? They they yeah. they know. And then after it's there for so long, the story does get out. Mm-hmm. We have a haunted st- store in the company I'm with now. Um, um, a store that I used to have down south was was mm-hmm. extremely haunted mm-hmm. uh people seen people in the store i seen people in the store mm-hmm. um a, a huge skeptic w- went in there one night <laughs> a general manager he was st- he was doing something uh redoing some shelves at three in the morning biggest skeptic ever mm-hmm. and um mm-hmm. he got a hold of me uh right when it happened and somebody came up and uh tapped him on the back and goes hey oh gosh and he was the only one in the store and he and he jumped straight up he said and ran dead sprinted out of the store you know there was another another company i worked for we had a haunted store and the it was a grocery chain this is back a long time ago mm-hmm. uh, but in, in the grocery chain and um the stalkers in that store would say that when they would show up in the mornings mm-hmm. sometimes the cereal aisle the cereal would all be down from where they blocked it in front and faced mm-hmm. and it would be in pyramids. That's uh, weird. Very poltergasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of times uh, st- soup cans and stuff would be stacked straight up. Oh, wow. And, yeah, that is, that is very typical and, poltergeist yeah, behavior. And there was nothing that, that they could, uh, could do about it right i mean right. but it was they went they didn't leave it that way because i mean you'd be audited your your district manager could come in you're mm-hmm. not going to leave stuff in the middle of the well, floor no no of course not um 
like well, that. Well, and it's creepy. And it went through more than one stocking crew. <laughs> Right. So, right. so it, it was, wasn't just somebody playing a joke. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, that stuff does happen. But that goes into one of our theories with uh, empty buildings or, mm-hmm. or buildings that are vacated for some of the time. Right. And also the fact when uh, there's another theory that we've talked about with uh, spirits really liking places public where there's a lot of different energies coming in, mm-hmm. you know, so mm-hmm. you can suck off all that energy. Yeah. I don't know. It's a very interesting story. I'm sure that Toys R Us, uh, hopefully that building, maybe we can. uh, uh, I'm sure the building will still be there. Maybe we can do something there. That (laughs) that sounds like a fun place to to try out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll have to check it out next time we're in California. (laughs) Shouldn't shouldn't be too long. (laughs) All right. So this next story is also about another haunted building. Mm -hmm. And this is the one about the landlord that invited anyone brave enough to spend the night at his haunted pub. Oh, that sounds like a challenge. So this is a pub called The Schooner. It's in Gateshead. And the owner's name is Adrian Marley. I love his name. And he's only owned the pub for like 18 months. He hasn't had it that long. And the locals talk about some ghostly history and, you know, the long, the guys have been going to the pub for years and years, you know, long serving customers and stuff like that. I love that. And he, I, the only kind of things that he's seen is he's seen, I uh, believe what we've seen in here, glasses, glasses sliding off the table. And now he used to be like an academic guy, like a math teacher or something like that. Peabody. And so he's very, you know. Trying to, well, academic, and he's trying to yeah. figure out how the glasses could possibly, you know, maybe the table's not level, maybe right. there's some kind of weird friction, or, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. And so now he's just kind of like, you know what, maybe this place is just haunted. <laughs> you know, maybe that's what it is. And I mean, he just sees them fall off the edge. It's yeah. just crazy. And so he opened up this challenge. He's saying that any ghost hunters can have the pub for the night as long as they pay for someone to be with them. Right. And he would just love to know if they found anything. So you got to like a, buy a prostitute or what? <laughs> I don't know. It didn't specify. I'm sure there has to be maybe somebody there associated with the pub. Uh, I mean, so you don't maybe, go in there and drink all uh, the maybe alcohol. Maybe his idea of someone being with me is different than mine. <laughs> yeah, <right>? maybe. <laughs> so <laughs> hello, <laughs> governor. <laughs> there's this article from just a couple of nights ago uh. where a medium actually took up the challenge. And her name is Suzanne Gill, and she's a medium, and she went, she agreed to spend the night in the Haunted Pub, and she brought with her this man named Alan Robson, who does a show called Night Owls on the radio. And so she went, she brought him with her, and this just happened on Tuesday of this week. So very, it's just happened. And I will link to Alan's Facebook because on his Facebook page, he has videos, live videos from the actual ghost hunt. Oh. And he has an interview with, with Suzanne. And I didn't get a chance to to go through because there's a lot of videos, you know, because it was a whole night thing. So I'm not exactly sure if they found anything or what they found, but there's lots of comments, people saying they saw stuff at certain times oh, and yeah. that kind of thing. So it's definitely something interesting that, you know, you might want to go check out. So Suzanne, you know, she was hoping maybe they would get some poltergeist activity or, you know, they would see the glasses moving, stuff like that. But like I said, I don't know exactly what the outcome was because this just happened, but I will link to all the videos and you can watch and see. I will say we've done the live thing like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um, probably like 2012. Mm-hmm. I believe it was 2012. We did a uh, live uh, at a hospital mm-hmm. and uh, the South Pittsburgh hospital. Uh, did, we had the multiple cams. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we were showing eight cameras on screen um, on our website uh, back then. And we had like the, the thermal up and mm-hmm. all that mm-hmm. stuff. And, and for people to let us know, and they had us running around like crazy. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, you see mm-hmm. dust and, Mm-hmm. All this stuff, yes. and, you know, but you got to check it all out because you never know. But, but you know, there's still stuff we haven't reviewed from that night because mm-hmm. how how weird the energy was that night and how mm-hmm. mad we all got. Mm-hmm. We still have disc of that. Yeah, I think I have all the DVR discs. Yeah, just that, stacked in there. Was, and and we heard things in the nursery that night. We heard mm-hmm. um, a baby crying right mm-hmm. in the nursery um, and some other stuff. And yeah, crazy things. That place just sucked our energy out so bad. Yeah, it was crazy. It was terrible. It was, <laughs> and we did it twice, and both mm-hmm. times it just it blew. It just went through us and sucked all of our energies mm-hmm. completely dry. Mm-hmm. Ugh. 
Sorry, just had to throw that one out there. <laughs> that just brought back some bad memories. All right. So speaking of psychics, I just wanted to mention this little tidbit. This is a story from TMZ. So, you know, it's good quality journalism. But this is At least you know it's true. This is a story about Meghan Markle. And actually, it was an interview with her, her, a psychic that she used to see. Right. And he claims that before she met Harry, he told her that he saw London in her future. Wow. And apparently, they had known each other for quite some time. And he just thinks she's an amazing person, very sweet. And that she was actually seeing somebody else at the time he told her this. Mm. And he was like, you know, I see you in London with a lot of British people. And her response was, oh, I love London. I love British people. And so later on, once she had met Harry and, you know, they started dating or whatever, she actually emailed him and she was like, oh, I met someone from England. So that I thought that was pretty cool that he had actually told her that and it really worked out for her. So. Well, I love that story. And mm-hmm. I love the fact I like her anyway, mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. she is like totally the the she's the movie <laughs> you know what i mean like right. she, she's not supposed to be doing what she's doing mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. you know it's a just that love story that's against all the odds and <laughs> and, and I, I, maybe it's because you've left those stupid things on too many times and i've been in the room <laughs> but um i, I just i just I, i'm rooting for them yes me too. me too i like i like that story but that's that's really cool that she was going to the psychic mm-hmm. that could be a one of those movies there yeah I mean, you know, I can see the, oh, girlfriend, <laughs> I see London in your future. And, you know, oh, shut up, Ricky. No, I see it. It's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Let's go on to a couple of kind of funny stories. Okay. And this one is about a gentleman. This is actually not funny. It's kind of tragic. This guy has some seriously bad luck. Well, then why did you say it was funny? <laughs> Because it is, it's a little bit funny. Okay. Uh, His name's Dylan McWilliams. He's from from Colorado. He's only 20. Oh. And recently he was bodyboarding in the ocean and he was actually bitten by a shark. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, that's hilarious. And it was between six and eight feet long. He needed like seven stitches. It didn't like take his leg off or anything. He just, it was like a tiger shark and it bit him. And he had to get, he like swam back mm-hmm. to shore after he was bit. And he had to have to like shore, seven on the stitches water. in the hospital. Well, before this happened, this is the, this is the weird part. Before this happened last year, he had to have nine staples in his scalp because he was camping at a Colorado summer camp and he was mauled by a black bear. Oh, so he was sleeping outside. Oh my god! And he woke up, and a bear was chewing on his head. So a shark attacked him. Yes. And a bear attacked him. Yes. So the bear's chewing on his head. He actually like poked the bear in the eyes and punched it in the face to make it stop attacking him. Oh my god! And he god. had to have. And there's a picture on there. It's disgusting. He had to have nine staples in the back of his head where it it bit into the back of his head. But he oh. was fine after that. You know. And all he said about it was, I guess I was just in the wrong spot at the wrong time. Oh, my God. Like very, you know, just this guy, is nothing can damper him. So if those two weren't enough, before that, he was on a hiking trip in Utah a few years before this and was bit by a rattlesnake. What? Or bit by a snake. And it was not a severe bite. He did get ill for a few days. Yeah. But yeah, that happened to him too. Okay, like three so, of the most uncommon, craziest <laughs> things you don't ever want to happen. Happened to this one 20-year-old kid. Yes. Isn't that crazy? And the my favorite part of the whole article is at the bottom. It says, Mr. McWilliams says his parents are grateful he is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what the, what? Yeah, so he was bitten by a snake. Yes. <clears throat> mauled by a bear. Yes. And then bitten by a shark. Okay, so you know the whole, <laughs> um, the family tradition of being struck by lightning? Yes. And it kind of makes you not want to stand under a tree in a storm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think maybe he should stop doing things like going in the woods or <laughs> you know, swimming in the water. People do that kind of stuff all the time and nothing happens yeah. to him. This poor guy, as soon as he gets around wild animals, Dude. it's like he's got this mark on him or something. And they're like, we have to eat this kid. Yeah, there is something. <laughs> there is something. It's like he is destined to die by being eaten by a wild animal. Yeah. And they're all trying. Yeah, t- <laughs> <laughs> there is something going on there. I mean... <laughs> Do you know what I would love to do? What's that? If I was a millionaire, 
Uh-huh. I would send him safari tickets <laughs> and put a reality show <laughs> camera with him just to just to film it. <laughs> Could you walk through this drive through yeah. safari and see what ET please? <laughs> can we see can we see how the uh can we see how the hippos react, please? Just wondering. <laughs> the fourth thing is he's just a twenty year old kid. He's cute as can be. Like there's a little picture of him, he's just all happy and you know, you can tell he's athletic and loves to do these outdoor things and he's just poor thing. <laughs> Such bad luck. <laughs> now you see why I said it was a funny story. <laughs> yeah, because we're terrible people. Well, he didn't die. If he had died or been seriously injured, it wouldn't have been funny. It would have been a little funny. So this next story that's kind of funny. It's not really paranormal. It just was really funny, and I had to take Is it to, funny haha or funny yes. this kid almost died? No, it's funny haha. Okay. So this is actually from Argentina. Mm. Yes. So, I mean, I joke about us having an Argentina story every week, but I don't actually look for an Argentina story every week. It that's just because happens the place that way. It's just, God, it's not like there's a lot of paranormal and a lot so. of UFO yeah. that happens down there. <laughs> well, this is a story that was heard on like a morning show. And it's about several police officers that were fired in Argentina after blaming mice for eating missing marijuana. <laughs> so <laughs> there's this warehouse in Argentina, right? The where they impound. Yes. And for they had some pot there for a couple of years. And when they did a recent expe- inspection, it showed that the inventory was off by half a ton. And so these police officers <laughs> claimed that the pot was eaten by mice. Well, you know, <laughs> one of the mice was actually quoted was saying that he's pretty sure that it helps his glaucoma. <laughs> unfortunately. Little three blind mice. Yes, I got it. Okay. Unfortunately, the, or unfortunately, the forensic experts say that mice can tell the difference between pot and food and that they wouldn't have ingested a half a ton of marijuana. And... That that's probably mice, that's though. probably not the explanation. So I thought that was really funny. Those poor cops. They actually were all fired. I don't oh know how God. they they got them all in con, you know in connection. Well, they with should it, be but. okay if they if they took all that marijuana. <laughs> they, took half a ton of marijuana. Uh, they, they should be okay. Um, <laughs> Maybe they just got bored at night. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's that that's funny. What if it was the mice though? You what know? if they're telling the truth and it's just like weird mice? Yeah. I mean, wh- <laughs> what if it really was the mice? I mean, animals have been doing strange things. We've documented this. Dude. Maybe the mice are just like, we're going to eat this pot because it makes us feel good. Dude, the the birds, the birds and the, like the dogs and the raccoons. And the baboons. And the baboons. Yeah. It's just, it, there's been a lot of weird <laughs> animal stuff happening. It really has. It's, it's, it's kind of creepy. Mm-hmm. But, you know. Poor guys. They could have got fired for nothing. Yeah, we'll we'll find out soon, won't we? (laughs) It won't be long. All right. Well, this last story that I have is actually one that kind of covers a topic that we were sort of going to talk about. Yeah. So this article is actually a history.com article. Yeah. And the reason they put this out is because it is the season premiere of the next season of Ancient Aliens. So in conjunction with that, they have... Put this article out that's titled The Five Most Credible Modern UFO Sightings. And I say modern because all the ones that they listed are after 2000. Yeah. And if you guys don't know, Mm -hmm. Ancient Aliens is my jam. (laughs) It doesn't matter. They can do 40 seasons of it. Uh, Just just that narrator, Mm -hmm. the same guy who narrates on Oak Island. Yes. Love him. Just the way he talks. I, I if if I I'm gonna have to do an interview <laughs> just with just to have him on here. Because when when he's just like a gold bullion <laughs> found at the bottom of a wishing well? I don't know. I just love the it way it makes everything so exciting. Yeah, well, it, it's it's hilarious though. It really it, is. It's always great. Yes. It's uh but yeah, anyway. Continue continue. Well, I was just going to go over the five that they claim are the most credible modern UFO sightings. Okay, so this is the top five (laughs) most credible modern UFO sightings, as told by (laughs) History.com. All right, so the first one they listed was the lights above the New Jersey Turnpike from 2001. So this is the sighting on July 14th, 2001. It was... Just after midnight, Mm -hmm. a bunch of motorists actually stopped along the highway to look at strange orange and yellow lights in a V formation over the over the interstate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's really unusual 
well, yeah. for an interstate for people to actually stop and pull over yeah, absolutely. to look at stuff. Especially if you've ever been through New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a place that you really want to stop. And um, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> that's not what I meant. <laughs> um, it's, it's not a place you want to stop because of the traffic. Right. The right. traffic sucks. And we have to go through there quite often. And it's not any fun. <laughs> well, originally, the air traffic controllers denied that any airplanes or jets or space flights could have caused the mysterious lights. But there's a group known as the New York Strange Phenomena Investigators. Right. That claim that they received FAA radar data data that corroborated the UFO sightings for Mm. that night. So that made it a very credible UFO sighting. So the next one they listed was the USS Nimitz encounter from 2004. And this is the one that was released along with the article about the Pentagon thing. And we talked about that already. Um, The one, you know, that they saw off the Nimitz. So So the next one they listed was the O'Hare International Airport Saucer from 2006. And this is when uh, Flight 446 was getting ready to fly to North Carolina from Chicago. And somebody on the tarmac noticed the dark gray metallic craft hovering over one of the gates. It was November 7th, 2006. And like 12 United employees and a few witnesses outside the airport airport spotted it in the afternoon about 4 15 and the witnesses say it hovered for about five minutes before shooting upward Mm -hmm. and when it did it broke a hole in the clouds enough so that the pilots and the mechanics could actually see the blue sky yeah it's bananas this sighting is so good yes but and it actually became the most read story on the chicago tribune's website you know, up to that date. Yeah. Um, however, though, because they didn't see it on radar, the FAA called it a, quote, weather phenomena, and they didn't investigate it at all. Well, of course not. Yeah. I mean, that's so. because it was real. Yeah, that one's a really cool one. That, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an amazing one, and, and I remember that like it was yesterday. So the next one that they listed in mm-hmm. this article is the Stephenville sightings from 2008. This is a small town in Texas, Stephenville, Texas. It's about 100 miles southwest of Dallas. And on January 8th, 2008, dozens of the residents viewed something unique in the sky. They saw lights above Highway 67, first in a single horizontal arc and then in like parallel lines. Yeah. And, you know, when dozens of people see the same thing, mm-hmm. that makes it a very credible sightings. So there was a local pilot. Um, he estimated that the strobe lights spanned about a mile long and half a mile wide and were going about 3,000 miles per hour. Wow. So, and there was no sound. And they kind of compared it to the Phoenix Lights incident, yeah. which was back in 97, because 97 was a weird year. 97 was a crazy <laughs> freaking year, man. And the the Air Force did say that F-16s were flying in those kind of areas, they didn't, the, you know, people that saw it didn't really buy that explanation. They just didn't think that that could be the same thing. Right. So that was a pretty credible one. And the last one that they listed was the most recent video, the Go Fast video that yeah. was released by, you know, to the Stars Academy. I mean, we did talk about that one recently, too. That was another one that was with that Pentagon thing. So very credible. Those are all very, very credible sightings. And so to go along with the credible sightings that mm-hmm. the history.com does, we thought we would kind of talk about close encounters and the rating system for UFO right, sightings. Right. Very interesting. And and because we just, you know, assume that a lot of people already know mm-hmm. where that comes from and, and we, we use those um uh, those rate everybody used the classifications you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we figured we would go through a little bit of those and what they actually are and and maybe some examples of of those for you on the uh, ufos yes maybe maybe we'll learn you something yeah there you go (laughs) there you go so you always hear the the term close encounter of the first kind close encounter the second kind so the term close encounter was actually coined by an american astronomer and a ufologist named joseph allen hynek Mm-hmm. And he wrote a book in 1972 called The UFO Experience, A Scientific Inquiry. Now, prior to writing that book, he actually was part of Project Blue Book. Yes. And it began in 1952. And I, it's continued it's all funny the way to, to hear you say this. <laughs> you know all that. Well, you know all this already. <laughs> because um, and, and many, many of our listeners, mm-hmm. it, it's funny to hear you say it, though. I love it because it's just like hearing a... Um, it's just nice. <laughs> it's just, it's just very nice. Yes. Yes. He, he uh, interesting fella. He, yes. You should yes. take a while and learn about him. <laughs> 
Well, in, in his book, he actually did the first three classifications, uh-huh. the first kind, the second kind, and the third kind. Right. Now, they also, he also broke down a couple other classifications of UFOs because like UFOs, the close encounters of the first kind are sightings up to 500 feet away. Mm -hmm. So they actually added a few classifications for things that were further away than that, things that you saw in the sky. So those classifications, the first one's like nocturnal lights. So basically that's just lights in the night sky, visible at a distance more than 500 feet, can't be attributed to aircraft. Brown mountain lights. Yeah, astronomical objects, other things like that. And it's funny you said that because the scientific community actually gives a lot of theories for these and things like swamp gas, yes. um, natural gas, static electricity, maybe something called temperature inversion. They try to use that one a lot, stuff like that. Well, you know, we've, we've heard stories of lakes, you know, where like mm-hmm. once a year, the, the ghost lights will come up out of the water and orbs, you know, right. and it comes up and people come and see that stuff. So, I mean, mm-hmm. there is natural phenomena that, that do, ex- you know, that, that are explainable. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But just because something happens uh, every now and then doesn't exactly make it natural to me or explainable. It, right. it just means that it does happen, you know. <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it's... It, it's very, it's, it's such a wide spectrum. It is. It is. And when you just see lights in the sky, of course, those are the hardest ones to, you know, uh, absolutely, verify. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would say that, that for us, you know, mm-hmm. the, throwing some of our personal experiences out here, which mm-hmm. we have quite a few with the, with the first kind mm-hmm. uh, of deciding of UFO, I think my favorite one is, um, uh, cause I'll get to the big one later on because you know, I don't particularly remember it, mm-hmm. but uh, my favorite one was with you after we had done the podcast, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this was approximately eight years ago, mm-hmm. and we had done the podcast in in a couple of cities over from where we lived, right? And we have we were driving. You have to help me back or two back. I think okay, we're driving back from the mm-hmm. podcast, mm-hmm. and uh, we get off our exit. Mm-hmm. And there is a no sound, mm-hmm. lights above the the vehicle, big bright white light, mm-hmm. a UFO. Mm-hmm. And it was so weird because it was like we were in another world. It was like we were, I mean, we could have very well been mm-hmm. abducted right then. I mean. <laughs> we don't know. It, it was really, really weird. Remember the car dying? Mm-hmm. The car died. And I remember we just saw the weird lights. And then, you know, it was gone and the car started and we were like, that was so awesome. We'll talk about that next week on the podcast because we had just done a show. So it was going to be a whole week. And, and we know, forgot all about it. Yeah. And then the next day, just completely forgot the whole thing. Yeah. Never talked about it until like weeks later. We were like, wait a minute. Yeah. I can't remember. Something triggered it. I don't remember what there it was, was. There was something that triggered it because mm-hmm. this is what we do. Mm-hmm. I don't think if we didn't do what we do. Yeah. I don't think that if we were not in the paranormal and in not, you know, not in ufology, not in all this, mm-hmm. if we didn't talk about this all the time, I don't think we would have ever thought about it again. No, probably not. And because there wouldn't have been anything that we were talking about that would have triggered the, the memory. Right. Something yeah. happened mm-hmm. that triggered it. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, it's very strange, very true, very strange that that happened. And I mean, it, it was the whole thing you see on TV shows the car died. Um, no explanation for it. And, you know, we've had, we've had some really weird things happen Mm -hmm. where we seem like we're out of time on a road and, um, we'll be on a road. We have no idea where we're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's happened many times. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, like time will pass. Yeah. And then all of a sudden we'll be like, haven't we been driving for a lot longer than we probably should have been driving? Right. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. We walked in, we walked in a Walmart one night. And it was just like nobody was right. <laughs> Everything was very strange. And nobody was correct. Like the sounds were weird. Mm-hmm. It was like we were in our own movie. And you know, <laughs> yeah, everything was really weird. There's there's been some there's been some stuff like that. But but close kind of the first kind. I, I definitely have to go with that one because that was a UFO. Well, you know that actually is a close encounter of the second kind. Oh really? Yes, because our car was affected. Okay. So it actually was a second kind. So you learned encounter. me something. Yes. So, uh, but the next time, the next section on the first kind is daylight discs. 
Mm. which is sort of like night nocturnal lights, except you see them during, you know, the daytime and you can actually see the shape of them and that sort of thing. And it's funny because one example that they used for this particular classification was the first documented post-World War II UFO sighting, the one on June 24th, 1947, with Kenneth Arnold, where he saw yeah. the nine disc-shaped things. And he actually right. is the one that called them the saucers. Fly, fly saucers. So, yeah. yeah. So that's skipping what skipping like saucers. That's what that classification would be the the daylight discs. Mount Rainier, where it's yeah, where it's still f- more than five hundred feet away, but you can see it. So then they have he had one other uh, classification, and it's called radar visual, like mm-hmm. where you just see the UFO reports that have a radar confirmation. Again, they're still far away, but it's just like a blip on the radar, right? And you don't necessarily see the actual UFO, but you just see it on radar. And they did have an example on here about from 1952. So on July 19th and 20th of 1952, there was a flurry of UFO activity over Washington, D.C. It was a flap. Yes. And the radar scopes at Washington National Airport and Andrews Air Force Base tracked the unidentified blips so l- on the radar. L- let me, uh, and, and I appreciate what you're doing here, mm-hmm. but let me get in. This is one of my favorite periods. Okay. So President Truman was one of the first or the first president that had to deal with the UFO phenomena. Right. Okay. Publicly. Mm-hmm. Let me let me state publicly. Right. And and so it was it was big. It was huge. You know, you, you go back to Roswell, uh, you go back to everything that started there in the late 40s, right? Mm-hmm. You go back to uh, Kenneth Arnold. You, you, you go to all that stuff. Well, that wasn't the only stuff going on. Mm-hmm. There, there was supposedly crash retrievals. There was other stuff happening. And mm-hmm. there was also word that that Truman had give the order to shoot him down. Right. And um. Uh, it was the UFO wars. I have read things saying that we lost an unbelievable amount of planes mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. ni- in the early 1950s, especially during like June or July, like you're talking right there, up into September, that we were losing like I don't know, 50 planes. We were losing like a lot of crap, right? Right. And um, that we were engaging. And, and there was warnings, you know, hey, we shouldn't take offensive action against these guys. Right. And it's just really interesting to me that I believe that flap um, over Washington – was mm-hmm. somewhat saying, okay, boys, mm-hmm. um, you know, you might be able to shoot one of one or two of us down, but you might not want to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, very interesting time. There was a craze. There was a there was this insanity that in it going on because you got to remember. I mean, we were still we were still living on our farms pretty much then. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. so there's also a lot of cool stories from these these farms there's a cool stories everywhere really but this is kind of where it happened we and we had just got into the nuclear age okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we had just recently dropped bombs right and i think that woke up the universe and i think that some people in the universe were like oh crap yeah Um, they're really gonna hurt somebody (laughs) they weren't supposed to do that yet Mm -hmm. okay um so anyway they um in my this is my opinion okay Mm -hmm. um but i believe that what happened because then you go to eisenhower and Eisenhower had supposedly, according to like stuff with his granddaughter and everything, he, he had three meetings mm-hmm. um, with aliens. And I believe that there was a treaty there. Mm-hmm. And I personally believe that the treaty had something to do with allowing a certain amount of abductions. Mm-hmm. And and I I really do because I don't know why. That we would have a phenomenon. And we're going to get to this, and this is not jumping around because we'll go deeper into this. I'm just saying this statement. Mm-hmm. I don't know why we would have a phenomenon. Uh, go look at the work of Bud Hopkins. You know, I don't know why we would have the phenomenon of the of the abductions, and never have. You know, we don't see it on the nightly news. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. care what you want to uh, believe. The UFO phenomenon is very real, and it's always been real. Mm-hmm. It's not made up. It's not fake. There's a jackass here and there that fakes a, a UFO sighting. Right. There's a lot more that don't. There's a lot of doctors and lawyers, um, you know, tenured professors that have ruined their careers and, and you know, risked their careers by talking about what's happened to them, talking about their story, talking about, 
you know, this this is what happened. And there's been a smear campaign since that same time period you're talking about right there Mm -hmm. when the government was getting in with Hollywood and saying, okay, let's see how they're going to react to this. Let's um, here's this. And and you know what? This is all public record that Mm -hmm. that we know that they interfered with stuff like that. Right. Um, But I think that they've always gauged it and, and, you know, gave us a little bit of the truth. You, You look at the little whispers and stuff like Ronald Reagan when he was screaming and et and mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. leaning forward and whispering if you you know if you, if you only knew how close this was to the truth <laughs> you know i mean little things like that throughout time right right you can continue on but i'm just saying <laughs> this that's one of my favorite areas of time mm-hmm. um because even the books that came out then man they're so cool they're so <laughs> that those early ufology books are so mm-hmm. awesome <laughs> All right, so this with the blips on the radar happened on July 19th. So then on July 27th, it actually happened again. And so the Air Force actually sent planes up to search the skies and they didn't find anything Mm -hmm. up there. It was just on the radar. And so the official explanation was the the temperature inversions where suppose something about the heat, it doesn't dissipate properly and the radar bounces off and refracts yeah. and that's funny how that look. doesn't happen yeah. again <laughs> it was this big long explanation and so that was their official explanation that's what happened uh, but they did mention that this same type of radar blip also happened in 1956 in england and they registered a bunch of radar blips similar to the ones in washington dc um, that were supposedly moving at a speed of about 9,000 miles per hour and they supposedly checked the radar and it was operating normally and so they never did anything about it but that particular location in 1980 was the site of the rendlesham forest incident there you go so definite known ufo activity in that area so those are the i'm sorry you know i speak about john tenney quite a bit Mm -hmm. on the show because Mm -hmm. but just because i I really enjoy and and, and think along the same lines as as the old bloke you know Mm -hmm. and and i mean that lovingly the old part you're showing tenney Uh, love um, yeah (laughs) so i but it, it was funny um earlier there was a tweet that he put out what he shared from 2010 mm-hmm. cuz i joked about how animated he was in that tweet from back then right he uh had had he had a daytime sighting of a disc oh wow that's cool yeah, yeah. and and it was it was tomorrow's date so he said he wanted to look at the same place yeah, to see if tomorrow, because he thinks like that, like right, you do, right? Um, like maybe that's gonna happen. Maybe on this it'll date come back, you know, every time. Yeah, same day. Yeah, that's just triggered. That. <laughs> so those are basically close encounters of the first kind, which are visual sightings. Now, to be an actual close encounter of the first kind, it has to be less than five hundred feet away, mm-hmm. and you know, you can see some detail of it. You can actually tell what shape it is, that sort of thing. So then if we move on to close encounters of the second kind, that's a UFO event in which there's physical, there's a physical effect like interference with the functioning of a vehicle like we had or electronic devices or maybe your animals react, you know, your dogs bark or something like that. Or if there's some kind of physiological effect, like maybe you can't move, you're paralyzed or you get heat or discomfort, really, that kind of thing, just some physical trace, um, of like impressions on the ground, scorched grass, vegetation, oh. any of those things is considered a close encounter of so the second kind. it feels like kind. we're going backwards here on our UFO stories because, right. you know, because <laughs> we'll get to the reason some of this probably happened. Why don't you tell them, um, break off from your own writing there, from your own story, mm-hmm. tell them a little bit about some scorched grass. Well, when we lived in Richlands, in Virginia this last time, I know we got up one day and we went outside. You were going to work and and we had walked outside or something like that. And there was a huge circle of scorched grass in our front yard that had not been there the yeah. night before. And we were just, we had no idea. There was no reason for it at all. But the night before we'd had some weird things happen. And that was, and we, we attributed, you know, that mm-hmm. to, to that happening. And it was this little circle and, and um, it's actually happened a couple of places that we've lived mm-hmm. uh, in, mm-hmm. in the past. So very weird. And, and you see the scorch ground. We do the scorch ground stories mm-hmm. um, sometimes. Mm-hmm. A lot of times in other countries, for some reason, yes. we'll get those stories. But I think that's because they don't block it as much as they block that news here. Right, right. Well, so, I think that, um, I think a lot of stories we hear too are about the, 
the interference with the car. You hear that a lot where people are driving oh, yeah. and they see something and then their car just shuts all, off. All of but the then electronics, it just starts yeah. back up. Right. Yeah, because so, I think that's a big one. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's a close encounter of the second kind, which we've obviously documented already that we've had. So then you move on. You know, one of the most, uh, the, one of the coolest ones to me mm-hmm. is in the late 60s, uh, the, the nuclear Minuteman missiles. Mm-hmm. If you ever take the time to listen to some interviews, man, go back and listen to some some interviews about that or mm-hmm. read some books about that. Um, so we talk about credible witnesses. Mm-hmm. We're talking, we're talking the, the, the blokes over all the, all the missiles. Oh, yeah. And there was UFO sightings mm-hmm. and they came and they hovered over over the bases, mm-hmm. and they shut off their nuclear weapons. Um, it was during the Cold War, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, and Cuban Missile Crisis time, that, you know, all that, right around the same times and stuff. And they um, they shut it off mm-hmm. and, and, mm-hmm. And, and turned it back on. But it was sort of that, what are you doing? Yeah. You know? Yeah, kind of trying to keep us in check sort of thing. Right. Okay, so let's move on. To the next classification, it's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Right. So Close Encounters of the Third Kind, kind of like the movie, is when you actually see a creature or a humanoid or some kind of occupant or pilot of the UFO. Right. So that is the last one of Hynek's original classifications. But I have some examples of some pretty famous examples of some, you know, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Okay. So I thought we'd go over those. So the first one is the one from the uh, African school children. Oh, my God. That's what's so awesome. So yes. amazing. And if you haven't seen the video mm-hmm. of, of them going back and talking to these uh, pe- these children as adults, mm-hmm. um, you mm-hmm. really need to take the time, find that, and watch it. Mm-hmm. So this actually happened in 1994, September 16th, 1994. Um, this... UFO landed in a schoolyard in Zimbabwe, and it had three or four things beside it, according to, you know, the journalist that did the article. And it was witnessed by 62 school children. Now, I believe in the story, it said that a couple days before this landed, that uh, a UFO actually streaked across the sky of Southern Africa, like there was a UFO sighting. And then two days later, this actual close encounter with all these school children. So, The day after the actual encounter, this uh, journalist, she interviewed the children and she had them sit down and write down what happened and draw pictures of what they saw. And then she kind of compared all the pictures and they were all similar. Oh, yeah. And these are children that were not exposed to, you know, popular television UFO shows and things like that. Yeah, but, but, you know, as I've heard him talk about before, Mm -hmm. um, what was it, 62? Oh, you said 62. 19, yeah, 62 children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 62 children. Mm-hmm. I, I, I've seen interviews with the teachers before. and They're like, look, you get 62 school children to try to say that they saw the same thing. <laughs> Even if you're trying to plan it mm-hmm. and, and hoax it, mm-hmm. it's impossible. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what happened with them, dude, is unbelievable. It's mm-hmm. amazing. Mm-hmm. I, I think amazing is the better word here. Because the children are are the best witnesses you'll ever have, in in my opinion, uh, out of the mouth of babes type mm-hmm. thing. I, I love I love the the way that they seen this. I could see so much just from their crayon pictures. Right. I can see so much of what happened. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. always been so compelling to me. This this one has been so compelling to me. And to Mm -hmm. see these children as adults Mm -hmm. mesmerized by this expedition unknown, Josh Gates, he's the Mm -hmm. one that talks to him. Mm -hmm. Um, You need to watch that and and feel that energy on that Mm because they tried telling him like it, like it was wrong. Like, right. You know, they tried making him feel like, like like they had done something wrong Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. it's very infuriating. It really is. But this one really got me. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that was, that's definitely one of the more famous, absolutely, uh, you know, close encounters. I have one here that is from Spain from November twenty fourth, nineteen seventy eight, and this is a landed UFO and humanoid that was encountered by four hunters in Spain. So, in the early morning hours, the hunters encountered a landed object with a humanoid being standing next to it, 
and they claimed that the UFO looked kind of like an upside down jar with a red light on top. And the being was strong and tall, and he had on a dark colored helmet and like a silvery bodysuit. I've seen, a, I've saw a lot of accounts where people claimed that the humanoid they saw was in like a silvery right. looking suit. And the witnesses actually became frightened because the humanoids started walking towards them and they took off running. Yeah. Which I don't blame them. Um, so that's just another documented close encounter of the third kind because they saw the humanoid and, but there was no other interaction. Absolutely. Okay. So this next example that I have, I actually got because it's from Fredericksburg, Virginia. Okay. And so it's in May of 1971. And this is an account uh, from a boy who was walking his dog through an open field and he observed a glowing thing over a pond. Yeah. And the object moved towards him and it finally stopped and it settled to the ground. And after it landed, a door opened and a man walked out, a quote, man walked out. And according to the witness, the creature, the man was powerfully huge. Right. And it said, he said that the being returned to the object and about 10 minutes later, the craft just lifted off. So that was the eyewitness account. And I thought it was really interesting because of him saying that it was like a giant, like it was huge, like it was a Bigfoot size mm -hmm. kind of creature. Right. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, it, it's all, it's all interesting when you go, how much of it's related? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? How mm -hmm. you, you have to ask yourself sometimes whether that's what you believe or not. Right. How much of it is related? Now, and I've heard a lot of Bigfoot going in with UFO before. Mm -hmm. We've had so much UFO go in with demons because right. uh, demonic haunting mm -hmm. and a uh, UFO mm -hmm. abduction, those type of things. Mm -hmm. the, the similarities are insane. Um, how right. much uh, of the Bible, how much is, you know, how much could be, you know, we think about these mm -hmm. grandiose type things, right? With heaven and, and these uh, chariots of fire and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. What if those are all just, just asking questions here. Right. What if those are all aliens mm -hmm. and they interfered, they interfered with our DNA They're, They're, they are, they are, our missing link. The mm -hmm. science has long known that there's a missing link between, uh, you know, the apes and and man. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But but the, the but it's there, right? Uh, what if they are our missing link? You know, what if these stories and magic and, and all, all of it, all these may all these things? You know, I'm just posing it out there, right? Not saying that's what I believe. Now I will say I do believe a whole lot of UFO encounters mm -hmm. are nature spirits are. Uh, magic things, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. the type things, uh, beings, hauntings, ghosts. I, I've right. seen orbs go across fields, mm -hmm. and people put that to UFO. It depends on what you're into, right? Right. And, and you always try to fit it into your mm -hmm. into your narrative, just like exactly. uh, just like the news, right? <laughs> but but it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. A question to pose: mm -hmm. What if it's all connected? Well, it's, it's funny that you would mention that because I. When I was reading about all of these and getting these examples together, you know, and I was looking up stuff about Heineck, you know, about his classification right. system and stuff. I, I read this little bit about um, this guy that studied under Heineck. His name was Jacques Vallée. He was like kind mm -hmm. of was like his mentor. And he was, you know, a ufologist and he studied the stuff and he had this very narrow view of what he thought, you know, alien encounters were and, you know, extraterrestrial, you know, visitation was like and stuff. But by 1969, after he had been studying it for a while, he actually changed his conclusions and he stated that his view was too narrow and it ignored too much data. So he began exploring the commonalities between UFOs, cults, religious movements, demons, angels, ghosts, cryptids, psychic phenomena, all of that. And he actually, uh, his third book called Passport to Magonia from Folklore to Flying Saucers. I think he actually talks about that. And that was just his view from then on. Like he was like you, he he was posing that question, you know, what if all of these things are actually related and it's all this extraterrestrial thing? And, so, you know, with as much as he do mm -hmm. and, and, as, and as turned on as he was to inside information and everything, mm -hmm. that you have to ask – when somebody like that, somebody who's worked really hand in hand with the government and, mm -hmm. and been in charge of things or, mm -hmm. or, or they know, okay, the, right. the, they've got all the memos. They've mm -hmm. seen it all. They've seen the unredacted versions. Right, right. 
when somebody writes a book like that, I'm always interested. And let me tell you why. I'm always interested in autobiographies. Like you used to, when we met, you were mm -hmm. like, why, why do you like nonfiction so much? You know, <laughs> um, it just blew you away because you really enjoyed fiction mm -hmm. and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and of course, I've come along through the years. But the real answer to that is I truly believe that everybody wants to tell you. Okay. I believe that everybody wants to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. When I do interviews or did interviews in my former life mm -hmm. with criminals, I knew they wanted to tell me the truth. Even people that do heinous crimes, mm -hmm. they somewhere deep down want to tell you when somebody cheats on their spouse, mm -hmm. they, they do things that gives them away. Sometimes I think they want to brag. I really do. I think some far deep down, like, you know, oh, yeah, mother, right, look, look what I can do, you know, somewhere deep down. Maybe they just want to get it off their conscience. Right, right. Exactly. Something. Get it off your conscience and, right. and, and feel better. Mm -hmm. I think these books, mm -hmm. sometimes after the fact, mm -hmm. pose questions right. that are disguised answers. Right. Like they're supposedly speculating, but really they actually know. Really, they're telling you the truth. I got you. I and, got you. and that, um, the very fact that he did that mm -hmm. really makes me think that there is a whole lot of it that's really connected. I mean, I feel like there probably is, especially if aliens are more of an interdimensional yeah. being, which is a theory. And look at the fact of the world leaders. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we know the world leaders you know, get together in the summer sometimes and mm -hmm. have all their, you know, gay toga parties and all this fun stuff. <laughs> right. You know, and, and cremation of care and, and right. all those type things. Now, there's a lot of things mingled in with a, a lot of what people say if you if you subscribe to the whole Illuminati thing. Right. There is a lot of occult type activities. Mm-hmm. There is a, a huge interest in UFOs mm -hmm. and, you know, it's all kind of related. You know, the, the if there was the secret pact, if there was the meetings, if there was all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at all the stuff that's come out in the past year that's that's where the government was actually looking at UFOs. Right, right. That they've just, you know. I mean, released. man, it, it, it really makes you think. It does. It really does. OK, well, let me give you a couple more examples of this close encounter to the third kind. So this particular example is from New Mexico and it is the experience of Lonnie Zamora. It was on April mm -hmm. 24th, 1964. And Lonnie Zamora was a police officer. Right. And he actually saw a craft. Mm -hmm. He saw the craft's approach, a conspicuous flame, alleged physical evidence left behind. And he actually claimed that he saw beings around the object. Right. And this particular sighting is actually deemed to be one of the best documented and most perplexing UFO reports because there were a lot of witnesses and he was such a credible witness being right. a police officer and that kind of thing. So that one was a really, really interesting sighting. And that one was actually one of the cases it's, it claims that it's one of the cases that helped persuade uh, Hynek that some UFO reports represented, you know, an intriguing mystery, like they weren't all explainable, right? you know, that kind of thing. So one more, and I know that you're going to love this one. I think this one's your favorite. This is the Kelly Hopkinsville oh, Goblins Encounter. baby, little green man. This one, I love this one. Yes, this is amazing. So Billy Ray. Yeah. Billy Ray, because they're from Kentucky. This is from Kentucky. Right. So his name is Billy Ray. He went out to fetch some water from the family well. Yes. And he saw a large shining object land about a city block away, because that's how they measure things in Kentucky. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Still to this day. I've lived there. So he went out to investigate with another family member named Carl, or Lucky. And they went, they Coral. saw they saw a small three to four foot creature walking towards them with its hands up like it was surrendering. <laughs> and when they later described the creature, kill it, Bobby. They said it had large eyes and a long thin mouth, large ears, thin short legs, and hands that kind of ended in claws. Yeah. So they went to the police station, like five adults and seven children. Actually, in Hopkinsville, went yeah, to the police station right. claiming that small alien creatures from a spaceship were attacking their farmhouse and they had been holding them off with gunfire for nearly four hours. So basically, they ran back to the house. Everybody grabbed a gun. Yeah. Even the kids. Oh, yeah. 
and they were well, shooting at them. I love this story because I've always thought about Grandma Edwards and, mm-hmm. and Grandpa Edwards because, you know, in the summer, me and my cousins, mm-hmm. um, all 58 of us, and we would all be out there. There would be any given day, mm-hmm. there would mm-hmm. be 40 people. 45 people okay we would all have a fire going outside we'd be barbecuing something right we were east tennessee rednecks all the Mm way and 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 we were telling ghost stories and and you know everything else right in a big Mm -hmm. haunted farmhouse and right so i i'm telling you right now if something had landed Mm -hmm. and me and my cousin used to go up in the field it would be dark Mm -hmm. late at night we would have sticks or whatever and we would be up there with, you know, some kind of 22 or some kind of uh, <laughs> BB gun or something like that. Right. Or, or just, you know, whatever, it, telling telling the ghost stories. And uh, if that had landed and we'd seen that thing, mm-hmm. we would have all ran down there. Everybody would have had a gun. <laughs> well, at the police station, actually, two of the adults claimed that they were the ones that had been shooting. They claimed to be shooting 12 to 15 short, dark figures who repeatedly popped up at the doorway or peered into the windows. So the police were obviously concerned that yeah. there was gun battle going on. They thought maybe some local citizens or they were shooting at each other. So four of the police and five state troopers and three deputy sheriffs and some military police from the nearby Fort Campbell all drove to their farmhouse. And they didn't find anything except evidence of gunfire and holes in the windows and door screens that where they had been shooting. So yeah. obviously they were shooting at something. Right. So later on, the next day, the neighbors, the officers came back to check on them, I guess. And the neighbors told them that the family had packed up and left because they claimed that the creatures had returned at about 3.30 in the morning. So they just got the heck out of there. They went and got some friends. <laughs> I guess so. I don't know. But yeah, that is definitely an awesome sighting. Yeah, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's amazing. The whole thing is amazing about it. So there again, was that little people? Mm-hmm. Was it, I mean, was it aliens or was it? Was I know, because they supposedly saw a craft too. So, yeah, but yeah. you never know. I, I'm just saying, mm-hmm. it, it, it's so strange, right? It, it is very strange. Um, but, you know, if that was aliens, then, then. I mean, it was something I totally believe it was something I don't believe. Yeah, I don't think they would just shoot out of their house. I, I, I don't nothing. believe in the mass hysteria stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. I guess it can happen. I mean, I believe in it if it's something like Orson Welles, uh, you know, War of the Worlds. Right. Radio right. broadcast. You can't, you're, nobody's seen anything. You're hearing this thing and you believe that the radio station come on. That, right. Basically, that's the the ultimate original fake news. Right. Okay. Right. He, he got on there and he, mm-hmm. he did a heap and helping of fake news. Mm-hmm. And I see it every day when I walk outside and someone's believing some story they heard on the news. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's it's all the way, everywhere across the country, right? Mm-hmm. That's the war of the world. It still happens. <laughs> you, you say the wrong thing on the news. And mm-hmm. it's and it's some fake narrative, and you're gonna have people rioting in the street. Mm-hmm. That's just how it works. I get that mass hysteria, right? I don't get Bobby Joe like mass hallucination kind of thing. You know, I don't get that shooting and you know <laughs> um, blowing up your house. You know, I don't know. It, it was strange. Something happened. I think something happened. I believe something happened too. Yes, I do. So. Okay, so let's move on to the next classification. Now these are just ones that were added to the classification system over the years randomly. And we don't know who added all of them. Right. But And some of them are accepted. Some of them are not. Right. Some of them are canon. Right. So this one is Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. And this one's pretty widely accepted, I'm pretty sure. Good movie, too. Yes. And this is when you actually have human abduction mm. by an alien. That is a close encounter of fourth kind. I think some of our third kind examples were going to be a fourth kind if people uh, hadn't yeah. run or shot or, <laughs> right. or something like that. So... It could also include voluntary experiences, but... That's a whole different... I mean, the the contactees mm-hmm. is a whole different world than the abductees. Yes. Well, that, that associate that we were talking about of Hynix, Jacques Vallée, yeah. he tried to argue that they should add into this classification any cases when the witnesses experienced like just a transformation of their sense of reality, like if they had hallucinations or dream-like events that were UFO-related. He felt like that should be included under here as a type of abduction, even though it wasn't like they didn't say I was taken. Right. Because I guess it could be the same type of experience. If you dreamt that you were abducted, I guess it could be the same sort of thing. Right. But I do actually have examples of some of the more famous abduction cases. And I know we've probably talked about some of these. 
But I thought we'd go over a few of these that were pretty interesting. And of course, one is the uh, Betty and Barney Hill abduction, which mm-hmm. is very famous in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, which is yeah very close to here. Yeah, and that's a in that place to this day is a crazy place. Mm-hmm. All right, so it's 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 probably our favorite northern town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we love going there. And in September of 1961, you know, as they were driving home from Canada, they had a bright light that jutted out of the nighttime sky. And as it approached them, they could actually see the humanoid creatures looking out of the window of the spacecraft. And then they had no memory of the next two hours. They were abducted and then they claimed that they were returned to their car where they had damages to their clothes and shoes. That was kind of evidence of their encounter. And it actually is a very famous incident. And on the 50th anniversary, you know, they they recognized it with the official historical marker. Yeah, I mean, there's a road marker for mm-hmm. it because mm-hmm. it's it's uh, I mean, it's famous for a good reason. That's mm-hmm. it's an amazing story. Well, another abduction story that got a lot of attention was the Betty Andreessen Luca abduction. And she's a woman from Ashburn in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. And once she, again, hello, New England. Yes. And so a couple years after the Betty and Barney Hill incident, she actually stepped forward with her own abduction story. And she claimed that she had been taking up, taken up, you know, in a UFO and MUFON actually really closely examined her case. And the investigator at the time was named Ray Fowler. Mm-hmm. And he had her undergo hypnosis to verify her claims. And she gave all these chilling details about how they were able to immobilize her entire family in order to take her. And that they, she claimed that they implanted a foreign object in her skull and that they could talk to her, you know, telepathically right. and that sort of thing. And she even described times when she felt very peaceful and that they were, you know, they did all these experiments on her. And, you know, Fowler spent a, many years trying to disprove her case he examined it and examined it and finally he just said look either she's the best most accomplished liar and actress ever or she's really telling the truth yeah so i'll let you go on here in a second with Mm -hmm. some of your wonderful examples uh this is obviously very exciting for me Mm -hmm. and i have to i have to go in here please i I want you to link for our listeners john mack Mm -hmm. and bud hopkins okay they are amazing and unfortunately we know we we're no longer uh have them on this earth uh, but the, on youtube there are several videos uh and in what they did you know they would talk to abductees they would take the cases they would mm-hmm. put them under uh, you know hypnosis and they right. would they would talk with them mm-hmm. and the the stunning thing especially look at the case of john mack he mm-hmm. was a harvard professor right and, you know, he, he put this work out there and pretty much, you know, risk his professional reputation mm-hmm. and it and it did a number to it. Oh, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure. Just because of what he found. Mm-hmm. And the same thing with Bud Hopkins. Now, personally, Bud Hopkins has that calming voice for me. Mm-hmm. So I could listen to Bud Hopkins talk forever. But I will tell you, if you watch one of these mm-hmm. hour long, hour and a half documentaries, mm-hmm. it'll change your life because you're going to hear these very serious educated men Mm -hmm. speak on the fact of what drew them here was you have a very real phenomenon Mm -hmm. okay there's a very real phenomenon happening thousands of people and that that number is being nice Mm -hmm. thousands of people telling the same somewhat Mm-hmm. Same story. Now, telling the same story, especially when they started doing this research, Stacy, mm-hmm. when they started doing this research, it was before internet. It was before this this research was in books. Right. It was before, but they were getting these examples from these people, and they were all very similar. Mm-hmm. And some of the things that were told to them. At the end, you know, they would go through the same experience. They would have some of the same sexual encounters. They would Mm -hmm. have uh, some of the same things that were shown to them. They all had a purpose. That was one thing that linked them together. Like Mm -hmm. they would tell them at the end, there was some sort of purpose that they had. You have a job, you know, you're special. Right. And this is going to be your job. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they would talk about uh, basically quit, quit screwing up the earth. Mm Mm-hmm. OK, uh, you really need to you really need to stop this. So I, I've talked before on the show about 
Bigfoot is real to me because there's a name for it in every culture before they spoke. Right. Uh, so everybody had this story and it all looks kind of like the same big hairy ape. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That makes it real to me. I don't even have to go any further than that. I don't ever have to see one. Mm-hmm. Before we communicated as human beings, every culture on this planet had a Bigfoot. Right. Um, they all had little people. Mm-hmm. There's all a great flood. Mm-hmm. I don't have to, you don't have to try to explain to me the science behind there being a great flood. I believe it because all these cultures, Mm -hmm. that's telling the truth. Right. It's the same thing with these abductions. Okay. So the abductees, it's very personal to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's kind of funny because there's the contactees too. And I mentioned that a while ago, Mm -hmm. but it's a completely different thing. The contactees were the eccentric like hey 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 <laughs> um they were the 1950s and 60s on 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 high alert man they were especially go look up george adamski okay, okay. um a-d-a-m uh, s-k-i mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. this guy absolutely amazing a lot of fun he he met with his friendly Nordic alien space brothers, and they took flights to the moon and other planets. But mm-hmm. uh, there was a lot of the contactees, and they would they would wear the elaborate costumes. Mm-hmm. And I believe that these contactees were living out fantasies, right? Doing a lot of drugs and telling some amazing stories. Mm-hmm. Okay, the abductees unfortunately suffer from what the contactees did. Right. There was a UFO craze when the contactees came around. Mm-hmm. And these people wanted to say, they wanted to be special. You mm-hmm. know, they wanted to be like, yeah, I went up there and had sex with four alien girls, you know. <laughs> um, and that was a lot of fun. And I get it. I do. It, it, but the abductees like Betty and Barney Hill, mm-hmm. okay, they had very terrible experiences. And they had sexual experiences. And they were uh, they were violated and they were hurt many times. Mm-hmm. Experiments and, and just crazy things. Crazy things. Mm-hmm. So I've told this before and I'll tell the uh, abridged version. Mm-hmm. But I had memories my entire life about uh, something happening with, uh, you know, being taken up in the sky. And in my in my memory, I was playing on my play set. Mm-hmm outside of our home and my mom uh, was inside on the phone with her friend Debbie I remember this Mm -hmm. and my mom talks very loudly and still does to this day and when she talks she just keeps talking so if she's on the phone to somebody you can feel pretty comfortable knowing where she's at (laughs) because you're going to hear her talking Mm -hmm. okay and so I remember being on the swing set and swinging and and right outside her window okay Mm -hmm. and i remember hearing her talking in the bedroom and something came down and basically i i started floating up in the sky Mm -hmm. and i could see my swing set below me it was very calming i was not scared i was told not to worry i was told that it would be fine it would be okay I kept getting higher and higher, and I was told uh, that I was special, mm-hmm. and I was told I was going to do special things. I remember this, and and I was told that it was an angel mm-hmm. that had me. So I knew I wasn't dreaming. Right. Now, I had to be three years old, something like that, in my head, mm-hmm. because I always had this memory. So that was there. And I also had these weird memories, strange memories of laying in my bed in that same place and seeing shadows go by the window. Mm -hmm. Now, in my head, I I was thinking it was Santa Claus, Stacy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Think about how scary that is. I can imagine. A child's mind. Right. I'm thinking that Santa Claus going by. (laughs) I remember, I remember seeing things walk down the hallway and I remember going and getting my mom and dad up. Mm-hmm. Well, they were watching TV, actually. And I remember walking in there. Now, this had to be three or four years old. Right. And telling them that there was a creature. And, you know, they put me back to bed, dude. I remember oh, yeah. that. Uh, of course. I, I remember that. Mm-hmm. And I remember having the whole family over looking at the sky. We had a lake 
um, back behind us. And, and uh, there was a mountain and there, there was like a little pond, mm-hmm. lake, not much of a lake. But I remember uh, them seeing lights and always feeling like there was something going on. Like my right. mom was very paranoid about that stuff, about mm-hmm. UFOs. And she doesn't even like that kind of crap normally. Right. So, you know, years go by and we and we start the show. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we and we did the paranormal because in many ways, documentaries, we, we investigated, we did all that stuff. But then we started the radio show, well documented here. And we started having guests on from MUFON and whatnot, mm-hmm. you know, and um, I told my story about going up and I even told my story about missing time uh, as an adult. Mm-hmm. And I told my story about the scoop mark I have on my arm. Right. Uh, because one night you found me outside, mm-hmm. mostly naked, uh, if I, not I all the way. So. No, I think you just didn't have your shirt on. Anyway, there was a red mark on my arm mm-hmm. the next day. I think it was itchy. And yeah, and we discovered it was a red mark and mm-hmm. it was very strange and it was perfect proportion. And we ended up looking up and finding out that it looked just like something called a scoop mark that mm-hmm. a lot of other people had. Yes. Um, so there's been a lot of things in that realm with us, with me, mm-hmm. you know, throughout the years. And none of that ever made sense. And, and in fact, we joked about it a lot. Um, and then after the show one night, I had heard, man, I had heard stories about my mom. They would never tell me. They would never tell me about what happened to her. There's supposed to be something happened. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she told me one night after after we got uh they were babysitting for us. Mm-hmm. And we went up there to get the kids after we'd finished uh, doing the radio show one night. Mm-hmm. And we get up there and uh, she pulls me in there and she just tells me, you know, because uh, I remembered little things, but they never would tell me. And she told me, you know, uh, we that I was playing outside, kind of like my memory. Right. And, and you know, I was playing outside. She picked me up in her arms because she saw a, um, it was a clear day. So daytime sighting. Mm-hmm. Um, she saw it looked like a 1950s UFO mm-hmm. and it wasn't very big. Like that's, that's one of the things like she, I, I forget what, how, what she said. Like it was, it was silly. The size she gave like, right. like, like 10 foot across or something, something that just, you mm-hmm. know, um, but it looked like a saucer from a 1950s sci-fi movie, mm-hmm. just cheap silver disc. So she picked me up in her arms and I was actually a baby, like, mm-hmm. like maybe one year old. Right. And I, she gets me up to the stairs and a light comes down. Mm-hmm. And I, and she talks about me pointing up mm-hmm. as I can see a baby doing pointing up to the light. Mm-hmm. And um, and then we were taking up into this and she had memories. She didn't want to tell me very much, but she right. uh, was laying beside me on mm-hmm. a table. Mm-hmm. And she was like, please just let me have my baby. Please don't hurt my baby or whatever. And... um then we woke up several hours later, many hours later. Mm-hmm. Um, say this happened at noon. We woke up at five mm-hmm. in her bed. And and I was just, I was looking at her mm-hmm. and I was holding her hand. Um, but a baby mm-hmm. and knowingly looking at her. Um, as I know what had just happened, kind of. Mm-hmm. And she called my father at, at, at work. Mm-hmm. And, you know, uh, just because he didn't know what was going on, you know, he didn't handle it very well. Mm-hmm. Um, but she, you know, she doesn't talk about it because of, and, and to know my mom, once again, my mom talks about everything. Mm-hmm. My mom uncomfortably will talk about everything. <laughs> if you have something you know if you have like a third nipple she's going to talk about your third nipple Mm -hmm. in 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 open company right and you know this Mm -hmm. for her not to talk about that story Mm -hmm. is awkward for my mom it is i agree so that only happens when something is so traumatizing Mm -hmm. that or you can't process it right you know but that that is a story that that explained a whole lot for me, mm-hmm. and it made the whole abduction thing very personal for me. But I, you know, I just wanted to explain the difference in abductions and contactees. Now, could it have been something else? Could it have been, you know, some kind of? I don't. I don't know. I don't even want to discuss it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you were so young. 
I was young. No way for you to really remember. I, unless I did some kind of regression. But yeah, mm -hmm. it w I would maybe I would maybe be up for that if somebody out there is a and I've never said that before. I've always said I wouldn't do that. But because mm -hmm. I've always been afraid of what I would drum up. Right. But I, I may be willing to do some kind of regression. It might help. You never know. Yeah. OK, well, let's hit on a few more examples of the Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind, besides your amazing example there. Um, this one is the Allagash Waterway Abduction. This oh, is the one from Maine. It's a Maine is. Mm -hmm. And so this was in 1976, and it was four men who claimed to experience the same abduction. And they almost didn't tell anybody, but they finally came out with it. But they were fishing in a canoe in northern Maine, and they saw a gleaming UFO with an 80-foot diameter and changing red, yellow, and green colors. Mm. And so according to them, the UFO swooped down and beamed them up with their canoe in a blinding light. Wow. And they came uh, to several they came to several hours later not remembering anything after their abduction, but they began to have frightening nightmares. Right. And they all underwent hypnosis and revealed their kidnappers were not from Earth. And they all took lie detector tests about their claims and they all passed the lie detector tests. So that one's definitely one that's close to home. Totally believable for that area because it's one of those areas in Maine that's very Oh, my God. We were, so many times we've been up there going, okay. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is where you get abducted or <laughs> yeah, see I'm Bigfoot. I'm pretty sure you've actually said that. Yeah, at the same time. Um, okay. So then we've got this one uh, from Brazil, the Antonio Villas Boas abduction. Yes. And he's a 23-year-old Brazilian farmer who was working at night. Yeah. Because, you know, to kind of avoid the heat. And he s describes what he saw as like a red star in the night sky. And supposedly it approached his position and it landed in some, you know, humanoid figures got out. And mm -hmm. he was like, I'm out of here. He tried to get away in his tractor, but his tractor died. So he yeah. tried to run away on foot. But supposedly the creatures got him and took him on board. Yep. And they did all kinds of experiments, stripped him down. Yeah. Did all kinds of crazy stuff. And this was one of those sexual encounter yes, abductions like you're talking about where the woman came in and, you know. And he had a child. Yes. And, and, and supposedly she said, you know, I'm taking your child. You know, she didn't say it, but she, you know, mo motioned that she, she was, was pregnant. Be beautiful, and, too. Yeah. Yeah. I would have ran. Uh, they, I believe they even. It's also not cheating. Like, that's kind of like, that's kind of <laughs> like beach pizza. I mean, you think so? if you have an alien pop down, that's the whole thing. Like I've, some of the stories I've heard on the abductions is mm -hmm. they can't get them to do anything for them sexually. So they'll they'll give them like imaginations like, you know. Right. Uh, right. So they show them. I've already got my list. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, told, like I told you before, I got my list. I'm going to act like I can't do anything for them. <laughs> and you'll be like. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, we'll start for Alyssa Milano. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny with this particular one, because in his story, he said that after, you know, that was over, they gave him his clothes back and then they took him on a tour of the ship, <laughs> sort of like a consolation prize. Oh, you did so well. Let me show you our ship it's before like, we kick you it's out. It's so terrible. It's like. <laughs> It's like we're going to abuse you, and then we're going to like take you to Disney World or something so you'll keep your mouth shut. Well, how freaking terrible is this? Yeah, that's it's, what I thought. It's so bad. And so he actually tried to take something to as proof, and they caught him, and they wouldn't let him take anything with them. And they, they made him get off the, the ship. And when they're he like, returned here, home— a, here, They're like, here, have a Jello pudding pop. <laughs> <laughs> when he returned home, he realized that four hours had passed mm. and he had all that time missing. And later on, you know, he got married. He became a lawyer. He got married. He had kids, but he stuck to his story, you know, his whole life of what he alleged happened. Because it's, it's true. Yes. So that was one of uh, the more interesting ones, you know, because it did it detail it, the whole uh, sexual interaction part where they were the trying The date on to... that one's interesting, too, because it predates... It was 1957. It was in yeah. October 1957. Yeah. It predates Betty and Barney Hill. And, you know, it's probably a better, mm -hmm. um, well, not a better story. I'm not, you know, comparing right. them like that. Right. But, but there's it, a lot more detail yeah, to this It's just one. so intense. Detail it, about what happened. The funny thing is he remembers so much of it. It's almost like the, that was before they had thought about doing the knockout drug. Well, I feel like he needed to be awake yeah. for the reproduction right, of right. it. And, you know... 
if they're just going to do experiments on you, they don't need you screaming at them every five seconds. You know, what are you doing? Why are you sticking that on me? You know, they're just right. going to knock you out. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want to hear all that. <laughs> so, of course, the last example doesn't really need any explanation. It's, of course, the Travis Walton abduction. One of the more famous ones where they oh, did the no. movie. Please. <laughs> oh, do we need the explanation? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's our running joke on the show here. Uh, if you don't know about Roswell or Travis Walton, this is not the show to find out. Um, God love Travis Walton. And uh, and I seriously mean that. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, it always cracks me up because any, any uh, new UFO show, mm-hmm. <clears throat> episode one is going to be like, what happened mm-hmm. in Roswell, New Mexico? Yeah. Or, you know, it's going to be... Unless you're in England and then it's what happened in Rendlesham it, it Forest. Rendlesham <laughs> Forest. And, or it's going to be, he was working with other men. <laughs> doing a video. You know, he was a lumberjack. And then all of a sudden, fire in the sky. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, his, his story is amazing. It is amazing. It's amazing and it's real. And it's true. And mm-hmm. when you go through every part of it, you could try. You could try taking that apart. You could try unraveling it. Mm-hmm. Those guys were. Those guys were under suspicion of murder, man. I know. Can you, can you imagine how nervous those guys were? Like nobody's ever going to believe us. What really happened? I mean, I just. I uh, couldn't nobody imagine. would do that, dude. No. Nobody would do that. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, it's it's nuts. It's actually bananas. And and it's a hell of a story, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can't do it justice on that one. And two, that's a whole episode. No, yeah, that, you know, there's so much involved th- in that story. Because we have so much detail there. So, mm-hmm. you know, read Fire in the Sky. Yeah. I mean, that's mm-hmm. a, watch the movie. Watch the movie. There you go. Well, those are examples. And, of course, there are many more examples of. Oh, yeah. Of, Countless. Yeah, the Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind and the Close Encounters of the Third Kind. All right. So the next classification that is on here is the Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. And mm-hmm. this is voluntary bilateral contact between humans and extraterrestrials. And they actually know where this one comes from. This one was named by Stephen Greer. Yeah, Dr. Stephen Dr. Greer. Dr. Stephen Greer. And he has the C-SETI group, which is the Center for the Study of yes. Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And he does a disclosure project. You know, he's been he's worked a long time trying to get disclosure. And he claims that this is, you know, contact experiences through conscious voluntary, like when people sit down and mentally try to contact right. extraterrestrials. And I think this is something that he does. Like contact in the desert type Quite stuff. often, yes. Proactive, human-initiated, cooperative communication. Yeah. So that is Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind when that kind of communication actually happens. It's kind of funny because that's something I try doing mm-hmm. every time I look at the sky. We should go to one of those events. Don't they do events? Like yeah, when you're out in the desert do. and there's a lot of people. Because I think you need probably need a lot of people together actually Doing I, don't, the, I, don't, I haven't really got the rules from the aliens yet. No, so. me neither. And I've never tried it. So, but that is close encounters of the fifth kind. And then you have close encounters of the sixth kind, which on here says is death of a human or an animal associated with a UFO sighting. So sort cattle of like mutilation. cattle mutilations, that kind of thing. Now, some people claim that this is the same thing as the close encounter of the second kind with physical evidence, mm-hmm. just sort of magnified. Right. But I guess um, other people feel like this should have its own category. So does this count when the government kills a, Uf- a UFO researcher? <laughs> um, I don't know if that falls under this category or not. I think this has to be death by... Of the UFO. This should have a, that should have a category. Should there be a star? (laughs) There should be. Trust me. All right. And then the final classification is close encounters of the seventh kind, which I don't have any examples of at all, but this is the creation of a human alien hybrid, either by sexual reproduction or by artificial scientific methods. Hence the refer back to close encounters of the fourth kind with the abductions, with the Sexual overtones. Oh, you have examples. (laughs) So those are... I've been waiting a long time to tell you this, Stacey. (laughs) My name is Arnon85662.3. Your example's in the other room. Oh, I see. Yeah. That would explain a lot. It would, wouldn't it? (laughs) It would. So those are all the official, unofficial classifications of UFO sightings. So we just wanted to kind of go through those, give examples, make sure everybody understood how yeah. the ranking system works. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and, and you know, and have a little bit of personal experience in there, mm-hmm. too, that we threw to you because, you know, it's it's interesting stuff. You know, mm-hmm. it's uh, as, as we talked about before, my one of my first cousins, 
Billy Joe. Mm -hmm. um, Billy Joe uh, worked uh, for the military, worked for the He was in the military and he was out there in Vegas. He was out there mm -hmm. in, in uh, those certain areas, if you will. Uh, right. And he came back long time ago told us a lot of stuff and i've talked about it on the other store uh, on, the, on the other shows and um you know and and he contacted us again when we started haunted south and you know he's like boy do i have something to tell you and his facebook's <laughs> gone never heard from the cat again yep no idea where he is couldn't find him um so i never got that you know so billy joe if you're out there in hiding <laughs> <laughs> and you're still listening to us now as the Paranormal Sideshow. Mm -hmm. You know, you can contact us through uh, ParanormalSideshow.com. That's your address to find everything UFO. Facebook.com slash Paranormal Sideshow. You can also contact us there if you've got some stuff to tell us about UFOs. On the Twitter, it's at Sideshow97. They'll probably monitor this, but you can still let us know through the Twitter. <laughs> anything that any of you know about the UFO cover-up. Instagram hot cover up damn it's John and Stacey Edwards I would not give any information over that one please <laughs> uh, youtube.com slash paranormal sideshow you know maybe maybe they don't look at the, the messages on YouTube I, I don't know <laughs> but what you need to do is take a quick moment to like us follow us subscribe to us and the more that you do the more disclosure will happen uh, I've got a guarantee on that I really don't, but it sounds really it good. It sounds good. It yeah. sounds good to tell you that. <laughs> um, but whether you listen to iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeartRadio, it doesn't matter wherever you listen. That's where our hybrids are hiding at. Mm -hmm. And if you've got your own story. Um, yes, if you are a government official or retired military and you wish to tell us your story. We'll, we'll, you, we'll <laughs> give you complete anonymity. Yeah, we will not um, tell, say anything about who you are, or how we found out. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to just tell us something, be wonderful, and we will make up a fake name and uh, tell it to the world. Uh, <laughs> just get it off your chest, man. You can't live with this forever. No, get it off your chest. And don't don't wait till you're on your deathbed to make a deathbed confession. Absolutely, do it early. Absolutely, get ahead of the game. What fun is that, man? These deathbed <laughs> confessions you don't get to you don't get to watch them squirm. You don't, <laughs> you don't get, get to see the fruits of your labor. <laughs> and if anything, if you had a partner in what you did, make it sound like it's him that's telling and not you. <laughs> You know, just 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 have that kind of fun. Um, but if you on the other end of things, if you if you have had an abduction experience, mm -hmm. if you have had any kind of uh, UFO experience whatsoever, um, you know, just like with the shadow people, get a hold of us. Let us know. Send us a message. Send us, uh, you know, send us your story. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, we 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 really attempt to reply to every single person, and we really enjoy having this outlet and having this communication, this dialogue uh, with all of you. And and it's almost like a case study for us because mm -hmm. Stacy and I will compare notes and it's, it's actually pretty awkward how similar many of those shadow people stories were. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them were, you know, that happened as a child. Mm -hmm. Like she said, there was, there was a good 70%. Yeah. That, mm -hmm. that were childhood stories. Mm -hmm. And and then there was all over the spectrum, you know, all over the spectrum. We believe that's a wide spectrum, but we also believe some of those, those some of those are UFO encounters. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So uh, good stuff here. I hope you guys enjoyed a little change of pace the last two weeks mm -hmm. uh, with what we're doing. Tell you what, when we have the big hot news week, we will give you all the news uh, <laughs> that we can. Uh, we can't we can't make it up or dig it up. So <laughs> we try to keep it hot button news. We kind of, you know, we try to keep it very uh, up to date. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we have a chance or, or a story come along where we think we could expand on something and, and you know, share some of our own experiences, we love to do that. Mm -hmm. um, please share the show. Please get the show out there. Uh, it's grassroots. It's all you guys. We appreciate everything you do. And we love you from the bottom of our hearts. For my lovely, gorgeous wife, Stacy. my name's John. So long from the Sideshow. Good night.